from his studios in New York. It's time for Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, where sports meets life. Here's your host, Dan Tortora. Welcome here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. Proud to be with you here this morning and every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time right here on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT and, of course, the homepage of WakeUpCallDT.com. It's an honor and a privilege to have the man on the show. We like him so much that we switched the Annoying Moment of the Week segment that always starts off Friday to get him on here, as I know he's busy doing an open house over at Onondaga Community College, and that is the OCC Lasers men's lacrosse head coach, Chuck Wilbur. Chuck, how you doing today? Hey, Dan. How are you? I'm doing well, and, and, and tell me what you're tasked with today with this open house. What do you got going on? Uh, we got like 130 uh, females coming up from the city schools, uh, I think eighth grade students, so we're uh, putting on a good day for them to get out of school for the day and check out of college. Awesome. And and with you and everything that you're doing, you know, representing OCC, just what you can say about what OCC has meant to you over the years. I know we've spoken on this a lot, but just what you could say about what the school means and and just what's evolved at OCC. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's, it opens up a lot of doors for you. A lot of people who need some doors to be open for them. Um, you know, this is a, a place where you get a lot of people get their start in life and, uh, you know, it's such a great opportunity for people that, um, you know, trying to figure out what they want to do in life. And, um, you know, you get those two years up here to kind of get your foundation built and, uh, get familiar with your college surroundings at, uh, you know, obviously the class settings and all that are smaller and a little easier for people to, um, navigate, you know, early on as young 18, 19 year old kids. And, um, you know, I've seen it happen to a lot of people over the years where, a fresh start for people and they really really flourish here and uh, just be, i'm just proud to be part of it speaking here with chuck wilbur occ men's lacrosse head coach and and chuck just you know going into this season just what you could say about you know what what this team has meant to you 11th njc championship i mean it, we always talk about the fact that it's it's acc- accolades upon accolades i mean what you've been able to do and and accomplish has been amazing, you know, 15-0, and 4-0 in the conference, 15-game, obviously a winning streak with all 15 coming in a row at Nassau Community College on May 13th. You got that victory for the NJCAA National Championship Finals, so you are national champions once again and national champions on the field that's named after you, just what you could say about this season. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, you put it like that it you know it, you sit back and think about what a special year it was with a lot of great young men um who made it you know such a fun year um they you know they did it on the field and did it off the field which is what i'm most proud of we have numerous guys going to division one like michigan and places like this that are very difficult college to get into and those guys um are going to that route we have a kid koichi nakamura who's a kid from japan who's coming back in the fall, and he's probably going to end up going to Cornell. So, you know, when you got kids that are winning on the field, winning championships, and you got kids that's doing the same thing off the field, it means even more. So we're just, uh, you know, had a great season with a lot of great young men that are uh, doing great things everywhere. Now, I think at this point, Chuck, you have, uh, is it 72 championships? Is that where we're at at this point? <laughs> 11, 11 national <laughs> championships, so. Yeah, and then when we look at, you know, I, I always ask you what what keeps you coming back and what keeps you going after it because you know what it feels like and you've tasted a national championship and achieved a national championship now 11 times, almost at a dozen. For you, what keeps the fire going? Because so many people thrive and, and desire and hope and wish for that moment and, and to know what that moment feels like, you can tell people what that moment felt like now, a few years ago, a few years before that. I mean, you've had the experience of it. So what keeps you coming back to OCC saying, you know what, let's do it again? 
ah, it's a new, a whole new group of kids every year that are trying to make it in this world. And you're just, you know, you want to be part of it and help them. Um, it's much more than just winning on the field for me. I enjoy watching these guys grow as men, um, you know, and, and watch them flourish. Uh, that's what, you know, drives me every year to get back here and, um, just to support these guys both on and off the field and try to give them opportunities. And, um, that's what drives me. Obviously the championships are the icing on top of the cake, but, um, and the reality is what drives me every year is I see a whole new group of kids that are hungry that you want this opportunity and they're traveling from all over the world, literally, um, to be part of this. And uh, that's what makes it fun for me. Before we let you go, Chuck Wilbur, OCC, men's lacrosse head coach in his 11th national title. Bring me into Howard Community College and Nassau Community College, those two matchups. And obviously you got the victories there to win the national championship, but just what you can say about the adversaries that you had in Howard as well as in Nassau. Yeah, well, uh, Howard's an up-and-coming program that we had to beat last year for the national championship, and they had a lot of guys returning, and uh, we were excited to play them again um, just because they were they gave us a great game last year for the championship game. So we were uh, we were excited to play that one. And this time we're a little bit more prepared. We didn't know much about Howard going into it last year and kind of caught us from surprise, out of surprise. And uh, this year we're a little bit more prepared and played one of our better games and you know, handled them pretty fairly easy. Um, credit goes to our guys. They're playing so well. And then um, this Sunday's game, it's the rival, NASA. We're... We uh, each and every year we look forward to playing those guys because that's the, the team that was the uh, in the 80s and 90s that kind of dominated junior college across. So we were uh, always excited to play them, and um, it's a rival. We've we beat them 17 out of 20 times in our 13 in my uh, in my 17 years of coaching. But those out of those 20 games, you know, we won 17 of them. Um, every game has been a great game. You know, there's not a game there that you just run them off the field. It's always very competitive, a tough game. They're really disciplined. And just think of Long Island. Uh, Long Island's one of the, you know, birthplaces of lacrosse and one of the meccas of lacrosse, we think, as well as Central New York and Maryland. And uh, they have a lot of schools to pick from in Nassau County. And you know, it's the best of the best play there. So we're, uh, it's always a great game whenever Onondaga plays Nassau. 17 seasons, 11 national championships, Chuck. I always say that we should we should talk about you more. Have you know? Have you? I, I'm just so baffled and surprised that in this city there's not more done. I mean, I think at this point there needs to be a giant Chuck Wilbur statue in downtown Syracuse. In my opinion, 17 years, 11 national championships. Just what you could say looking back on these moments and. And if you feel that love and that respect from the community, yeah, I don't do it for that though. I do it for um, to get the love and respect from the young men that come here. That's what it's all about for me. And I don't like all those, you know, the credit and the accolades because reality is all I do is hold their hand. And these guys are the ones that, you know, do it both on and off the field. We just support them here. So it's a uh, credit goes really to all the young men that have come through here and and been so successful and we got always got a great coaching staff and a lot of support from this, this college that um you know does so much for so many people so it's uh the statue should be of on a dog lacrosse players not not of me so i uh, i'm just fortunate to be part of it that coming from chuck wilbur and, and chuck just to just to kind of shore things up here this morning as i know that you have uh, a great open house opportunity going on at occ that we had spoken about but Words of wisdom to to young student athletes out there that are on social media that are in this world. You know, I'm, in the world we live in today, it's it's so easy to get to somebody and say, "Hey, I love you. I love your game." It's also really easy to get to someone and say, "I hate you and I hope you quit." What would be your words of advice to the young men and women out there? You know, you just you you, you battle every day and try to be. You know, a great player, a great person that, that single day, and don't worry about tomorrow. Um, and there's a lot of negatives now in this world, and social media kind of brings it all to light. And, uh, you know, I, you kind of got to block that type of stuff out and just worry about what you can control, and that's yourself. And uh, trying to be, you know, a great person that day, or a great lacrosse player, or football player, whatever you're playing. And so, um, so many opportunities in this world, and you know some of these people don't think they're going to get their chance, but eventually everyone does. Everyone gets their opportunity. Everyone gets their chance, and you just hope that you can uh, be prepared and ready when it is your turn. 
That coming from Chuck Wilbur, 11 national titles. Chuck, as always, you know that you will be back on here very soon, and, and we appreciate it. And like I told you before, you've now run out of fingers for rings, so you're going to have to give me one of them. <laughs> Sounds good, Dan. I appreciate having us. All right, talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Take care. That's Chuck Wilbur. Awesome sport this morning because he is extremely busy with the open house that they have at OCC, and I, I think it's great what they're doing. Like they said, what, about 130 kids that are young women that are going to be coming into the school to check it out and, and see what it's all about. So, obviously, I, I hope that all those young women have a phenomenal time and, and that OCC puts on a great show, which I know they will. So thank you to Chuck Welber for being a part of the broadcast this morning. And, and just to kind of go through it here, folks, because – we usually have Chuck on here pretty frequently throughout the year to see the games that they had. Uh, Anne Arundel, they won that game 14-7 to just to go through their, their season to 15 wins. Mercyhurst, Northeast, 33-4, to they win that game. Inside of the MSAC, Finger Lakes Community College, 35-1. to CCBC Essex, 32-5. to Genesee Community College, 14 to 10. Jefferson Community College, 35 to nothing in the in the MSAC as well. Tompkins Cortland Community College in the MSAC, 34 to 2. Broom Community College in the MSAC, 30 to 1. These are lacrosse scores, mind you. Ocean County College, 27 to 5. Herkimer County Community College, 34 to nothing. Hartford Community College, 24 to 5. Monroe Community College, 23 to 2. And then they took care of business in the NJCAA Division Three Region Three Championship Tournament. They got a victory over Tompkins Cortland Community College, 35 to two. And in the national championship semifinal, 23 to 12 at the Charles R. Wilbur Field for Chuck Wilbur. Uh, Howard it was the number four seed, and and pardon me, OCC won that game here in Syracuse, New York, 23 to 12. And Nassau Community College in the national championship game, a very close, hard-fought game, 11-9 to in favor of Chuck Wilbur and the OCC Lasers men's lacrosse team. The closest game they played all season long for the most part outside of Genesee Community College, which was 14-10. to So a, a national championship the way that it should be played, close and down to the wire, and that victory going to Chuck Wilbur, 11 national championships in 17 seasons 11 national championships i repeat in 17 seasons you want to talk about success we talk about lebron james and michael jordan and this that and the other thing well chuck wilbur is the chuck wilbur of lacrosse and 11 championships in nine seasons or part in 17 seasons big ups to everything that they have done the OCC lasers with Chuck Wilbur heading up their men's lacrosse team I mean you couldn't ask for anything better extremely humble guy and and one of the biggest things I took away from that conversation is what he just said he said don't build a statue of me downtown build a statue of the OCC players all I do is hold their hand not only a champion but a professional and a humble professional that's why we love Chuck Wilbur thank you to Chuck for all that you're doing in the community and we look forward to continue to have you back here on the broadcast. And and today, normally we're sitting here and, and talking for a bit, but this morning, a little bit crazy over at OCC for all the right reasons. So, like I said, uh, Chuck, keep doing what you're doing. Have a phenomenal time, and thank you for what you're doing for the community. And, and I would be remiss if I didn't give a shout-out on the other side of things here to the women's lacrosse team at OCC with Tom McDonald. Got to show some love where love is due. And Tom is a hardworking gentleman as well. The team went 7-4 and four this season, and their season ended in the national championship in Rochester against Hartford Community College 19-11. So they did advance for the opportunity to play in the national championship and lost in that first game after beating Hartford back on April 14th of this year. So close, hard-fought game. They won 17 to 13, and then Hartford got the best in the national championship round here at 19 to 11. So, but a a strong season for OCC on both sides, winning seasons on both sides, and two men who have been nothing but respectful, honest, always make themselves available for the show here, and I can't thank them enough for the love that 
that they put forward. So I truly appreciate it and thank them for all that they do. We're going to take a step aside on the show. You're all used to the annoying moment of the week starting things off. And because Chuck and I had to switch it a little bit due to the open house at OCC, annoying moment of the week comes up right after this. This is a wake-up call, Fast Break. Carvel DeWitt, it's what happy tastes like. Do you know why? Because we make ice cream. Creamy, rich, flavorful ice cream. Not yogurt or ice milk like some of our competitors. Ice cream. Fresh, by hand, daily. For the calorie conscious, we have something new for you. Our new Carvelite. Same great flavor, creaminess, and texture of our regular ice cream with only 35 calories an ounce. So whether you want an ice cream cake, flying saucer, dasher, carvalanche, hard or soft ice cream, we will satisfy your craving with our fresh, handmade, regular, or new Carvelite ice cream. Carvel DeWitt. It's what happy tastes like. Clothing that will change with you without you having to change. DreisigLady.com, D-R-E-I-S-S-I-G, Lady.com. With the bamboo line, relaxed fit clothing, as well as the athletic fit clothing, DreisigLady.com is fit for any woman, any time of the day, anywhere. Whatever you're doing, whatever your day commands of you, Command yourself to feel comfortable in Dreisig Lady Apparel. D R E I S S I G Lady.com. For all the women out there, feel good in what you're wearing and don't feel like you have to constantly change throughout the day. Whether you're a stay at home mom, a business owner, going for a jog, going for a meeting, or just relaxing at home, Dreisig Lady.com is the right fit for you. D-R-E-I-S-S-I-G, lady.com. This is Lawrence Papaleo, licensed real estate salesperson for Gilbo Realty. Call our home office at 315-752-9513, or better yet, call or text me directly at 315-748-2524. Let me ask you a question, Lawrence. If I needed you to help me buy a house, find the right place, could you help me do that? Joe, I'll help you find your dream home. You don't ever say my name on the radio, never. If I needed to sell a house, could you help me go about that the right way? Yes, yes I can. How do they get a hold of you? Call me directly at 315-748-2524. But you also do the commercial property. So if I got a business, couple businesses, got to take one here, move it over there, do this, do that. Are you going to help me buy and sell my commercial property also? Yes, sir. I like that. I like that. What's my name again? I have no idea. Absolutely. But they need to know your name. So give it one more time. This is Lawrence Papaleo, licensed real estate salesperson for Gilbo Realty. My phone number is 315-748-2524. Why don't you tell him your name one more time and that number so we can jot it down. This is Lawrence Papaleo. Call me or text me directly at 315-748-2524. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. Proud to have you in here every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Always a blessing to have you all listening in to the show. I want to thank everybody that goes on to the website at wake up call or pardon me, wake up call DT at dot com as well as on Facebook at wake up call DT, on Twitter at call DT, and on Instagram at wake up call underscore DT. So much love and appreciation to however you're connecting with the show. Thank you so much for being a part of the broadcast every Monday through Friday from nine AM to eleven AM Eastern time. We are Flipping with what was going on this morning, having OCC men's lacrosse first, and you're all used to having the annoying moment of the week to start off the show. So it's now time for us to get into the annoying moment of the week, proudly presented by Carvel DeWitt. The annoying moment of the week, proudly presented by Carvel DeWitt for years. An amazing place for you to take your family, girlfriend, boyfriend, whether it's your first date, your anniversary, or whatever it may be. Carvel DeWitt is the place to go, the longest standing Carvel franchise in America, over 60 years of serving the Central New York community and all of our guests that have come into this community. We love and appreciate everything that Carvel DeWitt has done with the community, and we thank them for being a part of Central New York and upstate New York for so many wonderful years. And they are the exclusive home of the Wake Up Call Sunday, chocolate, vanilla, or a twist. Topped off with cookie dough pieces and caramel swirl. My signature 
Sunday, available to you every single day of the week on 4322 East Genesee Street in DeWitt, New York. And with that being said, let's hop in to the annoying moment of the week. Dan Tortora proudly brings you... Is that for real? Are you kidding me? The annoying moment of the week. I, I really, honestly, I don't know how to respond to this. Presented by Carvel DeWitt. 4322 East Genesee Street. It's what happy tastes like. You have to be that crazy. I guess so. <laughs> The Annoying Moment of the Week, proudly presented by Carvel DeWitt, every single Friday here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, typically at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, and we flip things around a little bit today, like I was saying, so we're happy to have the Annoying Moment of the Week with you, and the Annoying Moment of the Week this week. You know, it's funny how I'm always looking for the Annoying Moment of the Week, and it just, <laughs> it's not that hard to find, right? The Annoying Moment of the Week is to put together something that either in my life or that's going on in general makes you take a step back and see that. And you know what? I'm going to use one of the hashtags that's this morning, and it's called Fake Love Friday. And I'm going to use that as the annoying moment of the week because I don't appreciate the fake love. The people that are there once you're successful, the people that are there when you're making some money, the people that are there when something big is going on, the people that are there when they see you rise they decide to show up. You know, I said my wife fell in love with me with no comma in my bank account. And that, to me, is she's been there. She's been there for the highs. She's been there for the trying time. I don't want to call anything a low because I, I look at I don't look at anything as a low. I look at it as a, a learning experience. But my wife has seen me on days where I was nervous, where I was scared, where I was upset where I was mad, where I was angry, where I was confused, where I was hurt, and she never left. She's been with me on days where I'm happy, where I'm excited, where I want it, where I'm going after it, when I believe in it, when I have faith in it, when I have hope in it, when my dreams and I'm realizing those things, and she's been there for that. So fake love Friday or fake love any day is not welcome in the household of the Tortoras, I'll tell you that much. And it's not welcome on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, nor on Super Powered Pop with DT and EB or anywhere, whatever I'm doing. Fake love on Friday or any day, not in my house, not in my place. And that's, you know, we, we talk about social media and people get inundated with that, right? You know, all that fake love. Oh my God, you're so great. You're so wonderful. I'm so proud of you. I mean, I see people in high school, I asked to be my friend on Facebook, that didn't talk to me in high school, made fun of me in high school, didn't stick up for me in high school if I was trying. I was always trying to do the right thing. And I see these people and I say, who is this? We don't know each other. We're not close. We're not friends. You know, and, and yeah, everybody deserves a second chance and a second coming. But I love when people tell me today, Danny, we're so proud of you. Make sure you mention us. Make sure you let people know we were with you back when. Because look at what you're doing now. And I was like, no, you're not riding this. You're not riding success. You want success? Get it yourself. And start listening to the show. And then maybe we could talk in a little bit. But fake love can't stand for it. Not a part of it. Never going to be that way. And the other thing is, where do we come in this world? Where did we get to in this world where people don't appreciate the success of others? There's some really awesome people that I've met in my life that whatever I'm doing, they're like, dude, kill it. Get after it, man. Have some fun. We know you're doing it the right way. We know you're getting after it the right way. We know that there's positivity behind it. So just go do it. We support you. We'll be there. It's going to be awesome. But there's those other people in the world, right? The people that don't appreciate the success of others. The people that when they disrespect you, you find a way to respect them and they disrespect you again. And then you find a way to respect them and then they disrespect you again like a broken record. And that to me is, you know, it's insane. I've met people in my life that have tried to get me to be not the person that I am. Be mean, hateful, respond in a negative way, and I never did it. And then they tried again, and then they tried again, and, and a year goes by and they try again. And I look at my life and I go, you know, man, you never got a rise out of me before. Why do you keep trying? And the frustration comes from the people that just keep trying. They don't quit. 
They just want to keep trying. I'll get them this time. I'll get them to react this time. I'll get them to say something this time. And it's never going to happen, but why even try? And I and there was a quote that I saw that will always ring true to me. If you can't appreciate the success of others, you will never in your life experience true success yourself. And to me, that's God. To me, that's karma. If you try to cut down other people's hard work, your hard work will eventually be cut down. Something will happen to knock you back a peg, to remind you that living to hate another person or living only to succeed by destroying something else will lead to your destruction. Seeking to be successful, beautiful thing. Seeking to be successful on the backs, the necks, in the heads of the people that are working hard as well, you will eventually meet your demise. And that's the annoying moment of the week because, you know, unfortunately, I see it and I experience it. I've seen it in my life. You know, you you try to do right by other people even when they don't do right by you. And I will promise you folks that is very easily said and very difficultly done is to be nice to the people that are not nice to you. But you find a way to do it. You find a way to be positive. You find a way to give the best that you could possibly give and be as positive as you possibly can. And at the end of the day, so you could put your head on a pillow and you could sleep at night without any type of bad dreams or cold sweats. But I will tell you, it's not an easy thing to do. But if you can do that, which we all can, you get to a point where your success is your own. Your love, everything that you've worked for, everything that you've done, it's yours to own and you have nothing to be ashamed of. You know, we always, people always, you know, what do people always say, right? If if evil doesn't succeed, why'd this person get here? If evil doesn't succeed, how come they got a raise and they got a promotion? They're making money and they married that amazing person and they got this great life. Trust me, it will find them. And that's not wishing bad on people, that's the truth. When you hate, hate will find you. When you love, love will find you as well. And there is no way to stop that unless you change your ways for the better. That's the only way that you can stop hate. You, but you don't battle hate with hate. You battle hate with love. And that's, like I said, it's the toughest thing to do, but it's the right thing to do. And in my opinion, it's the only thing to do. So if you're going out there and you're giving the best you can wherever you're working, whatever you're doing, and you hear this person said this, or they're trying to make this happen, or they're making moves to make you fail, please, 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 please put it out your mind. Because another quote that I took home was, and I want to I wanna bring this up for you, I want to make sure that I quote this exactly the way that it was said. And I want to give a shout out to, to this uh, gentleman, Lawrence Tompkins, because he is, if you're not following him on Instagram, you should be. He is one of the most inspirational people that I have ever seen on any type of social media. So I give him a lot of love here and a lot of respect. I want to I want to check out what he had because he said something that was really, really cool and really amazing. So I want to pull that up so that you guys can get the exact verbiage of this. But he had made mention of how we should handle other people. And I want to check it right here. So it says, Weak people revenge. Strong people forgive. Intelligent people ignore. So be a strong person, but also be intelligent. So don't even need to forgive, just ignore it. Don't even get yourself involved in it. Another thing, seek respect, not attention. It lasts longer. And there's some people I know that are seeking attention right now and seeking to take attention away from other things right now. But they have zero respect. And I haven't heard a damn person say that they respect that person. And that, to me, is what precedes you. It takes sadness to know happiness, darkness to see light, noise to appreciate silence, sorrow to feel bliss, and absence to value presence. Use this day. Use this day, and thank you to Lawrence Tompkins for all those amazing words. Use today to be the day 
that you say enough is enough. Use today to be the day that you take care of yourself. Use today to be the day that you show love and you give love and you stand up for what's right. Don't ever give up your dreams. Dan, should I give it up because this person's doing this to me or this person wants me to fail? You know how many people want me to fail? Do you know how many people have wanted me to fail? Do you know how many strangers have had the audacity to come to me and say, you're not allowed to do this, you're not allowed to have this show, it'll never work, you're not allowed to run the CNY Pop Festival, you're not allowed to do any of these things. I'm not allowed to because they said so. And you know, unfortunately in this world, there are people that give up. Unfortunately, in this world, there are people that hear those words that I heard and they go, oh my God, I don't want anybody to dislike me, so I'll just do what they ask of me. Don't ever do that. <clears throat> don't ever give up on what matters to you, what counts for you, what's important to you. Don't ever give that up because life would be awful if you're not living it truly and giving the best that you can give. It's a disappointment to yourself, to your loved ones, to God, to give up on who you are and what you're about and why you live the life that you live. Trust me, you got to laugh in the face of danger. You have to. Because the world has people that will appreciate what you're doing. And the world also has people that will say, well, if they do that, that it's going to mask over what I'm doing. And if it masks over what I'm doing and people can't see what I'm doing, then I'm going to try and make this fail. And if you put your energy, time, effort into seeing somebody else fail, you're not putting any of that effort into your life. You're not putting any of that effort into you succeeding. You're not putting any of that effort into doing anything positive in society. And you will eventually wake up one day saying, whether or not you achieved making somebody else fail, you did not achieve success. And success born on the backs of people that you have stepped on is only meant to eventually cease to exist. True success will never die. Success built on the backs of good, hardworking people, oh, that'll go away. That'll go away real quick. Why do I do what I do? Because I love my city. I love... I love this area. I love helping people. I love bringing something new and, and innovate. I mean, Wake Up Call is your break from the norm. Super Powered Pop is your break from the norm. The CNY Pop Festival is your break from the norm. Everything we touch is a break from the norm. It's not done the way that you're used to seeing it done. It's not heard the same way, seen the same way, felt the same way, read the same way. Because there's God behind it. There's my family behind it. There's the wonderful people like my grandparents and my parents and my mother's words behind it and my G-mama's words behind it and my wife's words behind it and some of my closest friends' words behind it. Those are the things that make it what it is. My heart, my soul, my blood, sweat, and tears are worth it because I can go to sleep at night happily and I have never, ever in my life, as angry as I got, made steps to make somebody else fail or de deliberately wanted to destroy somebody's life. Because I can't. Because I am on that path where I want to help people. I Why am I doing the CNY Pop Festival? Because I want this city to know how much I love them. I want people to know how, in a world of craziness, anxiety, stress, and negativity, I can give you something so positive that you you can't help yourself but smile. At least for that day. And hopefully a whole lot longer. Why do I do Wake Up Call? Because I absolutely positively love bringing you the ingredients to success and the annoying moment of the week. This sports card segment that we do every Friday, and John's hanging out in the studio right now, John Newman and Newman Sports Cards, and he's an awesome sport because he gets here before the show even begins, and he hangs out with me all the way up until it's our time to get on video and get this thing rolling. But why do we do this segment? It's not because John's giving me millions of dollars. It's, it's not because he's saying, hey, I want to do this, that, and the other thing. It's because John and I believe that the sports card world never dies. We believe that it's an amazing hobby. We believe that it's a fun thing to do. 
and so many people love it and so many people enjoy it and what it does for us is make us kids i think is fair to say is we feel like kids every day of our lives doing stuff like this and when you feel like a kid and you have that fun and excitement of being a kid you want to share that with other people and that's exactly what we're doing we're trying to tell other people that this is exciting this is fun and you should get involved and we'd love to have you get involved that is why we do what we do and that's why we're a part of this video and and doing these videos for you because we genuinely just love it and it's John giving of his time and me giving of my time to do audio on mixlr.com backslash wake up call DT and to be on Facebook live showing you cards talking about stuff having conversation that goes back to the sports world and John and I always got new stuff and I don't know if it's John's fault or if it's something God put in me but I can't stop getting after cards and I just bought something else and I'm so happy to show John because I didn't tell him about it yet but John also brought half his house to my studio today and there's a really good chance that John's going to leave with half of half of his house because I, I don't know I think I'm going to like I'm pretty sure I mean I when I, whenever I, I look at the collection, whether John's got three cards he brings in or 20 cards or he's at a show, I always seem to like what's out there. So we're going to have to take a look at what John brought to the, the wake-up call studios this morning. But that's what I'm saying, folks. The sports card video and, and audio on the show to all the segments that we do to coaching with class with Katie Kalinske. And, man, we've three weeks in, and, and God, is she, you know, she is good, right? It's great, and it's and, and it's nice, right? It's healthy. It's so healthy to have a show that's so many different things, and it's so different. You can't watch Sports Center and get your wake-up call fix. You can't watch the bottom line and get your wake-up call fix. You can't watch Fox Sports and get your wake-up call fix. You can't go to YahooSports.com and get your wake-up call fix. That is what I love about what we do here today. And like, like we heard from Orange Avenger, they said it's fresh. Innovative, different, new, exciting, fun. Super Powered Pop with DT and EB, our entertainment show. We have so much fun. Our job is to go see movies and talk about them. Watch TV shows and talk about them. Go to Disney World and talk about our experience there. We're living the lives of kids. And you know what? When we're 80 years old, brother, I hope that you and I are doing this still. Because, damn it, I'll be at Disney. And if you're at Disney, then we, then we did it. I have no doubt in my mind you're going to be there with me, and I'm going to be there too. And if we're 100 years old and we need a walker, I'm still going on all the new rides with you, and I know that your butt's going to do it too. Bringing together good people. And it's not easy <laughs> to find good people, right? It's a, it's a test, right? But when we find them and we get them, we hold on to them like crazy. And there's a reason why Dan Tortora Broadcast Media is going to be something great, is something great, and will always be something great. It's because we love you, we care about you, and we want to see you succeed. Every single person that hopes I fail, I got a couple things to say to you. God be with you. Have a phenomenal day. I hope you find whatever broke, I hope you fix, I hope you find peace and heal whatever broke your heart. And I hope that one day you'll give me a hug and shake my hand and tell me, I'm sorry for standing against you, and I hope to stand with you. Because I'm going to do things the right way the first time. I'm going to give everything that I can, and I am not a perfect person, but damn it, I will try my best to be the best I can be. And I hope that one day all my enemies can be my friends. And if they can't be, that's always on them, just like being an enemy is. Because I love them. And I know that whatever's broken them, I want to be fixed. Because I don't want anybody to go through this life not appreciating the time they had. And if you're hurting somebody else, you're not appreciating the time you have. Speaking of the time we've got, we'll take a step aside for a fast break, and we'll come back with Mike Sofka, who you know and I know is our fantasy football aide here. Him and I, the talking heads of fantasy football, the bobbleheads of fantasy. I don't like talking heads. Let's say the bobbleheads of fantasy football, because I like that. I think Mike and I should make some bobbleheads and send them out to all our fantasy football people. Hall of Fame FantasyFootball.com and WakeUpCallDT.com on the Fantasy Football page. We know fantasy football is all year round, and we're excited to talk about fantasy and reality of the NFL in just a minute. 
This is a wake up call, Fast Break. This is Jimmer Sikowski, owner operator of Chick fil A Cicero, 7916 Brewerton Road in Cicero, right in front of the Home Depot. I had a deep feeling that God wanted me to do something bigger with my life and to help people, help others. I kept putting Chick fil A in my life, and I realized as I was going through the franchise selection process that uh, positively impacting the lives of others was really core to what we do here at Chick fil A. First of all, it starts with the food. The food is brought in fresh daily you know we bring in local produce we prepare to order in the kitchen we hand bread our chicken we hand spin our milkshakes it's it's great food it doesn't taste like fast food i, I think the second thing is is the way people feel when they come in a chick-fil-a restaurant it's different we, we try to treat people with intentional kindness here which is very different and deeper than good customer service and so you know, i think it feels remarkable for most people to come in a Chick-fil-A restaurant. And then lastly, the impact that we try to have in the community is very different. It's a big part of the expectation of every operator of a Chick-fil-A restaurant is that they're actively engaged in their community, they're a leader in the community, and they're, they're making a difference. When they realize that what we're striving to do is to shine a little light in their life, that's a very, very different experience uh, than you will have in any other quick service restaurant. And it's that remarkable experience that I think people will emotionally connect with. Hi, this is Domenico Vitali, owner of Giovanni's Formalware, where you look great and feel even better with our renowned tailoring and alteration services on any suit or any tuxedo from anywhere. Call 315-455-8729. That's 315-455-8729. Stop in locally on Route 11 in North Syracuse next to the Ponderosa Plaza where you could choose your style, get fitted, and tailored, all at Giovanni's Formal Wear. I'm George Townsend of Honda City with some good advice from buying a new car. The true cost of owning a new car is determined by the appraised value when you trade it. No vehicle appraises higher than a Honda. Next, look for low APRs and deep discounts. You also want low maintenance costs and great fuel economy. That's why my advice to you is to buy a new Honda. Looking pre-owned, visit our Honda Certified Used Car Center. Honda City, 7140 Henry Clay Boulevard, Liverpool, or hondacity-cny.com. It would be a pity if you don't shop. For all of us that have always wanted our favorite restaurant to come to us, it's now a reality in Central New York with It's a Utica Thing. With Utica Pizza Company bringing their wonderful recipes that they've handed down through generations to you, to your events, to your business, to your home. It's a Utica Thing. Proudly bringing Utica Pizza Company on wheels to your location. Call 315-738-8946. That's 315-738-8946 to bring Utica Pizza Company to your doorstep with It's a Utica Thing. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. Always an honor and a privilege to speak with this gentleman that's coming up on the broadcast right now. His name is Mike Sofka, and he is of Hall of Fame FantasyFootball.com, and we know... And want you to know, and those of you that have played in the Wake Up Call Fantasy Football Challenge in Syracuse in our four leagues or down in Florida as we head toward almost a decade within the next couple of years, we'll be there. And that's how Mike and I met. We know that it's year round. And we know that it never truly goes away. And I want to thank the Penn and Trophy Center for being awesome about our our Lombardi look-alike trophy that is phenomenally done with that wooden finish and the logo for Wake Up Call on there, the name, the year. It is, I mean, this is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I love when we hand these Lombardis from the Wake Up Call Fantasy Football Challenge, when we hand these to you, the look on people's faces and how heavy the trophy is, just knowing that it holds some weight with people out there that are fantasy football players and NFL fans, of course, I appreciate everything. And then for last place, the toilet bowl with the M&Ms you could put in there or whatever makes you, whatever tickles your fancy. Even our last place trophy is a, is a, is a nice butte. And I, 
I've heard from people after this season, they said, listen, if I'm not going to win first place, I better win last place because I want one of those trophies. So even though it's a last place trophy, I want the Pennant Trophy Center to know that you have uh, you have definitely uh, sparked some uh, some excitement with people and some laughter with that. And there's there's nothing wrong with the good old toilet bowl with your with your face in it. And I think that you know Mike can have some some happiness here, find some peace in this. Is that his son Trey actually has one? And and I have to bring it down. I mean, when we go down to Florida this coming week, and hopefully we can meet up with Mike. I have Trey's last place trophy. And I know, you know, father and son, he, there's a little bit of razzing back and forth always. So I'm sure he can razz him a little bit with this. So first and foremost, Mike, welcome back to the show. And secondly, what are you going to do when I hand that trophy to Trey? Well, you said it. I mean, if you're not going to finish first, you're last. Didn't they say that in a Will Ferrell movie? If you're not first, you're last. I yeah. mean, that's... Yeah. Talladega Nights. That's pretty much what it is. Yeah. I mean, it's... And, 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 you know, what a life lesson, what a what a code to live by. You know, you have to win. And, unfortunately, you know, for some and fortunately for others, that's the way society works. We're, we're a competitive society, and that's what makes this whole big thing work. So, I, you know, for me, that's what fantasy football is like. It's like a microcosm of life. It's like planning ahead of time. It's like executing a plan, and it's about following through and making sure everything's done right. And, you know, that's pretty much life. Yeah, you know, you, you go out there and you're trying to get what you got to get. You know, fantasy football, the, the awesome thing about fantasy football is that it gets the fans involved on a daily basis. And like we said, if you're smart with it, it gets you involved all year round. It's like sports cards. It connects you to the sport that you love, even when the sport's not going on, even when you can't watch it. And that's the beauty of it. So... I love it because I love the trophies. I love the team that we have around it. I love the live drafts that we do, and I love the people that are in it. And the thing is, once you get somebody into a league, you know our our rate of return, our percentage of people that come back the next season is in the high 90s because that's that's just what it is. If you run a league, you do it the right way, you have fun with it, then there's always going to be life for that. And I'm uh, I'm ecstatic always about playing in it. But knowing that it's going on all the time means so much to me because I think the fans get so much out of it. And like I said, if you're if if you never watch a Falcons Bears game on Fox ever in your history, now you will when you're in fantasy football. And and you know you have to think: Do I draft with my heart? Do I draft with my head? Do I stay away from the teams I don't like? Do I only draft the teams that I like? And then you got to think about bye weeks and how you're going to handle that if you only draft the the players that are on the teams that you like or on your favorite team and so it's just interesting to see how people draft and and what they do and we try to bring in somebody new every single season and and bring them along and it's it's amazing and actually sitting next to me in studio John Newman is new to the game and you know for us and, and being a part of our our fantasy football league up here in Syracuse so it's always exciting to bring on somebody that's that's new and is, you know, kind of getting into it for the first time or getting into our league for the first time, which is, you're not, so what? He's looking at something right now. Oh, so, so uh, Yeah, he's been that. playing fantasy football for a long time, <laughs> but he's in our league. So as far as Mike and I are concerned, he didn't, he didn't exist in fantasy football until he started doing what we're doing over here and, and taking our advice, hopefully. But, Mike, I, I want to start things off with something in fantasy football. This guy has no home. And I'm I'm still baffled how you could go from the number one receiver to not even on a roster. I said, are they Kaepernicking this guy right now? What is your Des Bryant thought going into? I mean, we continue in this off season, and Des Bryant continues to wait by the phone. I guess. Is is this is like that girl in high school, that real pretty girl that? Everyone was kind of afraid to ask out, and she ended up sitting home alone on a Friday night. She's, you know, it, it, it's a little bit different, though, because I don't think Dez is worth what he's what he's trying to do. I don't think he's going to be able to walk into a place and be the guy and be the number one guy. He's going to have to accept the position as a role player, a position as a complimentary player, a guy who may not be the X. Sometimes he'll be the Y, and sometimes he'll be in the slot, and sometimes he won't be on the field. And it's hard to make a guy of superstar quality and superstar mentality to get that mindset. This is a guy who's probably always been the best at playing football all his life. That's all he knows since he was a little kid. And now all of a sudden the culture shock is, 
is, wow, I may not be the best, and wow, I may not be able to get what I want, and wow, I may not be able to do what I want and go where I want. This is a situation where it's out of his control at this point. He's um, not valued enough by teams to command the cost that it's going to take to get him there. And then you got to think of the, of the, the you know, the complementary factor, the destruction matter in the locker room. Is he going to be a good locker room guy? Isn't he? This is a, a, a wily vet, but he may be a little bit salty yet because of his situation. So it's just really a rough situation for him. I hope he gets through it. But, you know, it's the mentality. It's the, uh, you know, I'm not the best guy, but I'm the guy who's going to be a great teammate and help a team win. That's who he needs to become. Yeah, you know, and, and I, I'm not going to disagree with that. I think that Des Bryant needs to know that, you know, he's not necess- he's he's not the guy that's going to be the number one guy where he goes from now. And and that's, you know, that's a culture shock, I'm sure, for him. And that's that's going to be... It's going to be a tough thing for him to kind of digest, but he needs to digest that and, and kind of see that and understand, okay, you know what? I'm going to look at whatever team is going to give me an opportunity, and if I feel it's the right fit, then I need to go out there. I need to, I need to take that opportunity and be what I can be to that team and, and do what they need for me to do. The thing that I find funny, though, Mike, is that the team that looks like they need the most help on their roster at the wide receiver position one of those teams is Dallas. They have Alan Hearns, who I think is better than people give him credit for. I think, you know, there's a bunch of people in Texas that may be like, Alan who? But I've covered him since he came into Jacksonville. I think that at times he has been underutilized or kind of forgotten a little bit, but I think that he brings a lot to the table. I think that he can be something special for the team. But behind him, it's Cole Beasley and company, and really no major guy outside of that and Jason Witten's not there anymore and they got to figure out their tight end situation so dare I say that the team that let him go is the team that needs the biggest splash potentially yeah yeah it is kind of ironic that way but I think Dallas is in a lot better position than people realize now you know Alan Hearns he's arguably going to be an improvement over what they had in Des Bryant a lot of people don't see it that way, but I do, you know, haven't watched Alan Hearns for many years. Uh, he, Cole Beasley, he's a role player. He's great in a slot. But this Michael Gallup ain't no joke. And if he can just make any kind of presence this year, they're going to be okay. And, you know, Terrence Williams isn't the most sure-handed guy they got, but they also have a veteran receiver in it, Deontay Thompson, who can also return quicks cause, kicks because Ryan Switzer's gone. So this is a, a, a team that's got some speed. And they got some skill at wide receiver, and I think they're going to surprise some people with uh, their ability to move the ball, especially when they got Zeke in the backfield. You know, you're going to have to make a choice. Are you going to put eight guys in the box and think those receivers are weak? Well, then you may have a situation like Jacksonville had last year, where they had a bunch of no-name guys, guys that weren't household names outside the city of Jacksonville, and some not even outside the, outside the practice squad in, in Jacksonville. And these guys made names for themselves last year, and you know, look for a Michael Gallup and a Deontay Thompson to do that this year. Yeah, you know, and it'll be interesting to see what they can do. The other question mark about this is is what Dak Prescott is going to show up. Now, I understand that Dak Prescott was affected by the fact that Ezekiel Elliott was there, not there, there, not there, and, and so on and so forth. But what do you think about the Dak factor? Because it was Carson Wentz before Carson got hurt. He was the guy. He was the offensive rookie of the year. He was the one that was standing out to everybody. Then Dak took over, and, and Carson went down. And then after that, Carson, all of a sudden, he he does what he does in his sophomore season. He helps aid the team to get to where they were. And then Nick Foles, you know, it's basically like Carson Wentz was the starting pitcher, and Nick Foles was the relief pitcher who closed that thing out. He was the closer, and he, and he knocked everybody down. He brought him up and knocked him down. For Dak, Dak didn't have a great sophomore season. We could blame it on Ezekiel Elliott, but, yeah, I also look at the fact that Des Bryant's performance went down. Jason Witten, since Dak has gone there, I haven't seen the Jason Witten that I saw with Tony Romo. So what's the Dak Prescott factor, in your opinion? I think Dak is going to go as does Ezekiel Elliott. You know, Ezekiel runs strong. He has a great game. So does Dallas, and then they're able to move the ball. But don't underestimate the acquisition of Tavon Austin. Now, I didn't mention him in the receiving core there on purpose because he's classified as a running back now. He's going to be that change of pace guy. He's not 
not only going to be a return guy, but he's also going to be a guy that they're going to put in a slot. They're going to put in mismatched positions. They're going to try to get him covered by a linebacker where he can fly by a linebacker. So don't underestimate that. So I think there's going to be some a little bit of new wrinkles in the offense in Dallas, and I think that should help Dak Prescott. You know, you notice when, when Dak's in the pocket, he doesn't seem to be super strong. When Dak's on the move, a la a Brett Favre or somebody, he can really get things done. So I think Dak is going to be fine. You know, it, what is this, his third season? or You know, so, I mean, he's still a young guy. He's still learning the game. The game's still slowing down for him. And, you know, it's almost an unfair situation that he came out super hot. So this is a, you know, a situation where, well, you want to root for the guy, but if Zeke isn't running, you can't root for it. No, the guy's a good quarterback. I think he's going to be fine, and I think you're going to see that from him. I don't think he's, you know, top five, top eight, maybe not even top ten quarterback in fantasy, but I do think for what Dallas needs, he's, he's exactly what they need right now. That coming from Mike Sofka of Hall of Fame Fantasy Football dot com. I want to take a look really quick, Mike, before we hop off for the day. And and this this is Mike and I on Friday, but you're gonna from here on out come and listen to us on Thursdays, ten AM. Make sure that you're listening in. Mike Sofka of Hall of Fame Fantasy Football dot com. We've been on Fridays for the last couple of years. We're moving the Thursdays to include Thursday night football to give you your fantasy advice a little bit sooner and to give you more days to listen to it on the archive on wakeupcalldt.com, the RSS feed, the iTunes podcast, the downloadable app powered by Podbean, Player FM, TuneIn Radio, and so much more. You will now have an extra day to get our advice and to send us your thoughts, which is always good. And so Mike and I will be available to you even more so now, which is awesome, and I'm excited about that. Mike, before I let you go, uh, free notable free agents. There's a bunch of people out there right now. Uh, I want to look at wide receivers, and, and I'm going to give you the names of the receivers. I want you to tell me, fantasy-wise and reality, who would you want to pick up? Eli Rogers, who came from Pittsburgh, Deontay Gray from Houston, Jeremy Butler from Buffalo, Britton Golden from Arizona, Brenton Burson from Carolina, Aurelius Ben from Jacksonville, Lewis Murphy from San Fran, Brandon Tate from Buffalo, Eric Weems from Tennessee, Michael Floyd from Minnesota, who was in Arizona before and barely played in Minnesota, Kamar Aiken from Indianapolis, Dontrell Inman from Chicago, Russell Shepard from Carolina, Harry Douglas and Eric, Eric Decker from Tennessee, Jeremy Macklin from Kansas City, Brandon Marshall from the Jets and the Giants, or Des Bryant from Dallas. Of all those that are on the list, which one do you think has any fantasy value if they get picked up? Eli Rogers, um, maybe Eric Decker, maybe Jeremy Macklin. You know, Harry Douglas is perplexing as well on where he lands. There's a lot of guys that are on that list that, you know, outside of an injury or outside of something drastic happening, they, you know, they may not land on a team, you know, come week one. So, you know, it's a it's a game of attrition. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. These guys sometimes have to sprint to get there. But, you know, a guy like Eli Rogers has more upside in him still. Um, you know, but I, I think it does. Brian is, you know, overvalued himself, and he may market himself out of a position I think he's ultimately going to land somewhere where, you know, again, it may take, you know, in the, in the upcoming weeks to see if there's any injuries or anything that plays out that's unusual that would uh, open up a receiver spot. Again, that, that's saying that Des Bryant's got his head screwed on straight and a team believes in him. I like Eli, Eli Rogers out of all of them. And, and when we look at this, uh, to kind of follow up on that, what is it about Eli Rogers, former Steeler, a very young player in the league, why do you like him with fantasy value over anybody else? I think it's simply, you know, he's got more of an opportunity. You know, if teams are going to bring somebody in, they'd rather bring in a young guy, but they, they'd rather have a guy that has some veteran experience. And here's a guy who's been rostered with the Steelers. He's been with a pretty good organization there, and this is a guy who I think still gets it. So I think there's more upside for a guy like that. You always want to bring a guy in and, Maybe have him be a role player, so maybe he won't be, you know, the guy to start. Maybe he'll return kicks, or maybe he's fourth or fifth on the depth chart. A guy like Eli Rogers always seemed to find himself on the field in Pittsburgh. 
you know, you can't hide talent very long. So I think this is going to be a situation where, depending on where he lands, and I'd be willing to gamble wherever he lands, he's going to get himself on the field. And that's what you have to do. You have to have a guy who's going to be on the field scoring points. Yeah, and speaking here with Mike Sofka of Hall of Fame FantasyFootball.com, uh, really quick here before we uh, we hop out here, and like I said, you'll hear us every Thursday now instead of Friday, so make sure that you set that in your wake-up call calendar as we roll out our new schedule moving forward here going into June and so on and so on, and I'm very excited about all the segments that we have and the schedule that we are rolling into right now. Running back-wise, I'm going to name some names And these are guys that used to be fantasy top 10 players, fantasy studs, top 10, top 15, some of them top 5, some of them number 1. DeMarco Murray, Eddie Lacy, Shane Vereen, Adrian Peterson, Danny Woodhead, Jamal Charles, Terrence West, Alfred Morris, CJ Spiller, all out there, none of them with a job. Thoughts on these guys, Mike? Yeah, I think DeMarco Murray's got a lot of a lot of uh, wear on the tires. I'm not sure he's going to latch on anywhere. He might again come injury because he could be a plug-and-play guy. We saw that happen at D'Angelo Williams a couple years ago with Pittsburgh when Bell went down. You know, Eddie Lacy, I, you know, I don't know which Eddie Lacy is going to show up. The one that's got his buffet pants on, the stretch mm-hmm. pants ready to eat, or the guy that's ready to eat on the football field and run. Shane Vereen, I've seen that dance time and time again. I'm out. Adrian Peterson, I think, you know, I, I hate to say it, this is a guy who may have lost a step. This is a guy who may not be worth it at 30, 31 years old, however old he is here. Just, uh, you know, I don't know if teams are chomping at the bit to add a guy who used to be great. You know, same thing with Jamal Charles. There's a lot of wear on him on those knees. He's had some injuries. You, you wonder how that, you know, how he's going to pan out. Alfred Morris, I think his better days are behind him. Terrence West, same thing. Although West might still have an opportunity to jump on somewhere. Spiller, I think, you know, as much as I like the guy, he's an also ran. And same thing with Woodhead. I think, you know, these shows have been played out. People are tired of watching the reruns. People people want the next upcoming thing. They want the guy with the upside. They want the guy that's going to be able to help them on special teams all over the 53-man roster and still contribute on the field. And that's usually younger players with lighter contracts and the, the the want to. They haven't been around so long that they feel they have to have somebody carry their bags. They're willing to carry somebody else's bags. That coming from Mike Sofka. Yeah, it's interesting to, to look at this and, and to see the guys that are available at the running back position. You know, DeMarco Murray, two seasons, if you think about this, Dallas, the league-leading rusher. He leaves, goes to Philly, misused doesn't work out after a season goes to Tennessee great in Tennessee or pretty let's not say great let's say he's pretty good above average then all of a sudden he gets hurt and he was nothing to Tennessee last year and now he's 30 years old and trying to find his place inside of the league he's been up and down and around the corner every other year he seems to have a good year which would mean that a team should pick him up for this season Eddie Lacy you're right and I said this last year. I said, Eddie Lacy, because I do my own rankings. I get a book. I look through the book. I get multiple books. I see where people have stuff. I go online. And I couldn't agree with what I was seeing in the books, which is Eddie Lacy was a top 15 guy. I had him in the bottom of my top 80. And look at his output and prove me wrong on that one. Shane Vereen hasn't done much of anything. Adrian Peterson looks like he's a head case on the field now and a problem. Jamal Charles just... Was good in Kansas City, had some moments, but he got hurt. So, you know, when I'm looking at this list, Orleans Darkwa, he's young, he's 26. He had nobody blocking for him with the Giants. I'd like to see him going somewhere and maybe be a third down back, let let people see what he can do, what he's capable of. But, I mean, there's guys on this list that you just kind of, you know, you look at him and Bishop Sankey never really came through. Mike James never really came through. Jordan Todman never really came through. Brandon Oliver, I'm surprised. This this short the the short guy kind of looks like a Darren Sproles type of guy. He's 27 from the Chargers. He's been serviceable before, so I'm surprised that he's been left out there. Andre Ellington never caught on in Houston or in Arizona. C.J. Spiller, his last name unfortunately describes him. He fumbles the ball a lot, and that was an issue with his career. Lance Dunbar never did much of anything except for a few good games in Dallas. Alfred Morris for goodness sakes, was supposed to be the savior to the Redskins. Then he ended up on the Cowboys and in the basement. 
Terrence West had a good moment here, there, but Cleveland Browns did nothing, then went to the old Cleveland Browns in Baltimore and, and has done little to nothing and, and hasn't stayed healthy. So, you know, to me, it's you look at these names, and we're looking at former number one guys, but outside of maybe taking a chance on DeMarco Murray or maybe taking a chance on Orleans Darkwa, there's not a lot of guys that I'd go out there and say, yeah, I'm going to take a chance on them. So that's where we sit right now. So with that being said, Mike, I, I want to I want to have one final one, and that's the quarterbacks. Trevon or Trevon Boykin, T.J. Yates, Josh Johnson, Kellen Clements, Scott Tolson, Matt Moore, Mark Sanchez, Derek Anderson, Jay Cutler, Slim Pickens out there. One of the guys that's not located on this list is Colin Kaepernick. For some reason, he's not only been blackballed by the NFL, but he's been blackballed by the free agency tracker. Thoughts on thoughts on the quarterbacks that are out there because it's slim pickings in my opinion. And should Colin Kaepernick finally just get a job, get an opportunity, get a chance? I mean, you and I have talked about this before, and we're looking at a list of players that are not as good as Colin Kaepernick. So, what are your thoughts as we go forward from the quarterback position? Well, there's a lot of trash out there. There's a lot of not quality quarterbacks when we're talking about the NFL. If we were talking about, like, the American Alliance or something, these would be great names. These guys would love to have these guys play quarterback for them. But these guys are all are all, all has-beens, all, all could-have-beens, all should-have-beens. And, you, you know, you mentioned Colin, Colin Kaepernick. That's a self-inflicted wound. I can't go into my job every day, stick my middle finger up at my boss, and try to go on about my day. If I do that every day I'm there, guess what? I'm not going to be there much longer. And, and and that's pretty much what he has done. He's made things controversial for himself. We've talked about his outside influences and his girlfriend and so forth. We've talked about, you know, wh- where he's at mentally. And, you know, it's a shame. He made that conscious choice to put a social movement that he wanted to create above his career He has to live with that consequence. He made his bed. He has to lie in it. And whether I agree or disagree with his political actions, that's the facts. You know, you can't go in there and stir up all the mud and then try to serve me a glass of that and say it's crystal pure water. I'm not going to buy it. It is what it is. You're out there stirring it up. I don't need you in here stirring it up. I got a business to run, and I got games to win on the field, and I don't need the interference in the locker room or on the field. That's why Colin Kaepernick doesn't have a job in the NFL. You know, and the thing is, he's he's not wrong for the social injustice that he stands up against. But, you know, teams in, historically don't like lightning rods, and even the Jets can only take them for so long. And the Jets took Tim Tebow and, and, w- and wouldn't keep him on the roster because of his positive lightning rod. So whatever it may be, you know, teams eventually give that up and back away from it. The one thing that I think that we have to find very interesting, Mike, is that Terrell Owens was supposed to go to the Ravens and refused to go to the Ravens back in the day. And now we have Des Bryant, who is offered by the Ravens, allegedly, and refused to go to the Ravens. So what is it about Baltimore that makes these players say no? And Terrell Owens, I mean, he had a career after that. Will Des Bryant have a career after saying no to Baltimore? Yeah, I don't know. You know, again, I'm not, I'm not sure. And, I, I, you know, I don't know what's wrong with Baltimore. I mean, I, I, you know, Baltimore seems to be a, a, a tough team year in, year out. You know, out, you know, outside of Joe Flacco's inconsistencies and non-performance, he can only seem to play in the playoffs. But I got newsflash for Baltimore. You have to get to the playoffs in order to play well at the playoffs. So look for some competition from Lamar Jackson there. I think that the thing with Baltimore is it's a curious, it's a curious thing. They cleaned out wide receivers this year. They ended up bringing in Crabtree and Snead and Brown. They ended up taking Jaleel Slot, uh, Scott and Jordan Leslie in, in, in the draft. So this is a team that I think is a lot younger than people realize, yet still have a better and enough defense and speed on the defense to be able to get things done. I think it's foolish if you're looking for a job and you have a certain skill set, and there's one of 32 places you can go, one of those 32 places, and the only one that we know of that can verify that offered him a contract, and you say no, because one of these other 31 guys who haven't spoke up may do something. you got to jump on that, man. you got to, you got to, if you want to play football, play football. If you want to go out there and try to be big time on everybody, well, you may not be playing in the 
NFL. And that's where we're at. That's what happened to Terrell, and that's what's happening with Des Bryant. So while I wish them well, I think they're fools for turning that down. You know, there's not always diamonds everywhere. Sometimes you got to go through a lot of manure. So, you know, God bless those guys, but I think they're they're wrong. And I think Baltimore is going to end up being a better team for it, ironically. Yeah, Baltimore's got a whole new stable of wide receivers right now coming in to this team with the with the John Browns of the world, the Michael Crabtrees, and the Willie Sneeds, and two totally new tight ends as well, and Mark Andrews as as well as Hayden Hurst. So, and the thing that I don't understand is Hayden Hurst's autograph isn't worth that much anything to anybody, and is a first round draft pick, and arguably the best tight end in the country coming out of the draft. So, well, I, I <laughs> again, I guess that's something for John and I to discuss why Hayden Hurst is not the guy to most people. But with that being said, Mike Sofka is the guy. Hall of Fame Fantasy Football.com. Make sure that you get in touch with him there. He has a guarantee to help you out in your season. So make sure that you connect with him for fantasy football. And Mike and I will be connecting with you from here on out every Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern Time. With that being said, Mr. Sofka, I hope you have a phenomenal day and a phenomenal weekend. Please enjoy the weather, and hopefully when I spin back to Florida this time around, we'll be able to hang out for a minute or two. Sounds like a plan. Thanks a lot, Dan. Talk to you next time. All right, take care. That coming from Mike Sofka once again. We'll take a fast break, and then we'll be live here still on MixLR.com backslash DT, and we will be live on your wonderful, beautiful video screens, on your phones, your tablets, your laptop, your desktop, this, that, and the other, whatever it may be, virtual reality, maybe we get to sit in your house with you. You'll see us on Facebook Live in just a moment. And us, meaning John Newman of Newman Sports Cards and myself, Dan Tortora, we got to talk about this Hayden Hurst thing because I feel like I can't give this autograph away. Yet, I've had seventh rounders that I've been able to sell. So we'll discuss that in just a moment. This is a wake-up call, Fast Break. Gear up with the real deal at Drysig Apparel. Creating what people are going to see and learn about you before they even meet you. Gear up for what you need for your team, business, or event. To look professional, look good, and feel good, outfit yourself at DrysigApparel.com. That's D-R-E-I-S-S-I-G Apparel.com. The only place to gear up with the real deal. What's the universal language of a fan? Clapping your hands. With Fan Hands, the ultimate sports fan accessory, find your team color, slip them on, and start cheering on your favorite team with 11 different colors always in stock on FanHands.com, where you'll find the ultimate sports fan accessory. Real fans wear Fan Hands. Utica Pizza Company spells family. Your family. My family. Their family. The recipes that they have shared with each other throughout the years and have now been so gracious to share them with us. I can sit here and talk with you about all the great things that are on the menu. We'd be here forever. So let me say this. Utica Pizza Company is second to none. And now you can bring it home with you and you can dine in in the restaurant. UticaPizzaCompany.com will give you all the information that you need. And let me say, these Utica Greens... They're the best. Utica Pizza Company. Call them and place your order at 315-214-3060. That's 315-214-3060. Families break bread at Utica Pizza Company. Hi, this is Domenico Vitale, owner of Giovanni's Formalwear where you look great and feel even better with our renowned tailoring and alteration services on any suit or any tuxedo from anywhere. Call 315-455-8729. That's 315-455-8729. Stop in locally on Route 11 in North Syracuse next to the Ponderosa Plaza, where you can choose your style, get fitted, and tailored, all at Giovanni's Formal Wear.
Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. Appreciate you being here with us and very excited on speaking on sports cards and the sports car- and their connection to the world of sports that we have here. So on sports cards and their connection to reality. So I'm very excited to be able to bring this to you here this morning. And I'm happy to have in studios with me the man that we appreciate always having here with us on Fridays, and that is Mr. John Newman. We are going live right now from the Wake Up Call studios with Newman Sports Cards. So live now from Wake Up Call, and obviously we're live with you on MixLR.com backslash Wake Up Call DT, and we're going live right now on Facebook Live. So if you want to check us out, now is the time to do so. You can see us in the studios of Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora with John Newman of Newman Sports Cards hanging out right here. John Newman, and I am wearing, and I want to show this just in case my family who's in Italy right now, just in case you guys have a chance to take take a look, take a peek from Florence, I am wearing this for you. So it is my Italia soccer garb, and I'm very upset because the World Cup is this year, and Italy didn't make it. Yeah, that's crazy. So, yeah, and, and the years that Italy does if Italy doesn't make it, or Brazil, France, Spain, people go insane. Spain made it, though. So here's the thing. I'm Spanish and Italian, so I'm cheering for Spain, and I'm cheering for Peru, because that is where my my younger brother Nico is from. So I'm going to be cheering on those two. America didn't make it, and Italy didn't make it, so it breaks my heart. But my family is having real, wholesome, amazing Italian food. They're walking around beautiful parts. They're seeing beautiful things. They're in a place of romance. So to Papa Joe and Mary, I hope you're enjoying Italy. I am very sad you didn't stow me away. And as John and I are here in Syracuse... I, I hope that Italy is treating them well. I'm sure it is. The sun's out here you yeah. know, today. <laughs> I, I love I love how that's that's our claim to fame. They're in Italy. They're having a great. They're having great food. They're walking around. They're seeing all these statues. And what does John say? The sun's out in Syracuse today, so it's a good day. We made it. Yeah, we got the sun out. And how about the? I know this has nothing to do with sports cards, but what? How did dandelions? end up invading Syracuse, New York. They're it's, everywhere. It's crazy. Oh, it's a yearly tradition. This year seems bad, though. Yeah, this year seems a little bit excessive, Dandelion. I feel like there's somebody in the middle of the night that was just, like, putting seeds. Yeah, could be. And everybody's... The Dandelion Fairy. Look out. He's, he's on the test. Can I, can I tell... Can I, can I just say to people, I don't like cutting my lawn every week. Yeah. I'm thinking, like, every two weeks. It's like every four I'm, days. I'm now. probably going to get some flack for what I'm about to say. What are you uh, going to say? You don't we, have three, we have three lots where, at my house. So we have a, like a side lawn, a smaller front one, and yeah. a side one in the front, and then a larger back. Uh, so we have a, a John Deere riding lawnmower. Okay. But my wife will not let me use it. So my wife actually mows the lawn. And it's not because I don't want to. It's just she won't let me. So well, Why won't she let you? Are you bad she, at driving? She thinks I... I used her her her, uh, her dad's tractor back in the day, God rest his soul, and um, it it went kaput. And I think she uh, it was kind of an old tractor, but I think I'm I'm taking the the fall for breaking it. Although I what'd you I, do? I was just riding it. I went over kind of a, a an incline, and it just didn't work. Oh. It literally stopped. So since then, I think she just. Super whatever it might be superstition. She just thinks I'm bad luck. She thinks you're bad along. luck with ride about mowers. So see, I my thing is, I I wouldn't know how to shut it up. I just keep yeah. riding. But I will say that's like Jordan, my son, who's 18. He's not allowed to ride it either. So it's it's not like them two. So and just the, so, not so me. your wife doesn't trust men. On, on, <laughs> on riding on riding lawnmowers, we can't just leave it at that. That wouldn't. Okay. I don't know that's, if that would be yeah. accurate. Yeah, but. she doesn't trust you. But see, but that's the thing. Maybe that's what people need to do. Maybe the men of the world need to get the... I mean, it could be anybody. Men, women. Get your spouse to believe that you're not good at mowing the lawn, and then you never have well, to Well, I'll show it. you another... I'll tell you another trick that, that worked for me. Okay. Um, 
Is she watching? We're on I, I, she's working, so I'm guessing okay. not. But I'll, I'll tell her about it later. Okay. Is It's the old guy trick, you know, Dan, when you don't want to do something, just screw it up. So yeah. I can do laundry, but I learned by screwing it up <laughs> once, I won't be asked to do it again. They all come out tiny <laughs> baby clothes yeah, and pink. Or and pink, like, oh. yeah, the white shirt's pink. So I did that. You and, buy Red Sox every week just to throw <laughs> them in there, don't so you? So I, I don't do the laundry. So actually, Jordan does do that. He's he's pretty good at it. So, yeah. you know, some people probably listening right now are probably like, well, what does this guy really do? He I was going to say, what do you do? Do you I wash do, dishes? I do. I do. I sweep vacuum. Okay. Um, and as far as lawn work, I have to do the trimming with the trimmer. Although I'd rather ride the the lawnmower and, and if I could trade that. But that ain't going to happen. So yeah. I'm, I'm resigned to uh, I'm the lawn trimmer. How, you're not far away from me, so can your wife drive the lawnmower over here so she, I don't have to do yeah, mine? If, if, if she's willing to do it, I'll Call follow her. in the car. She, I, I'd love to drive it over, but she's not letting me on that thing, so it's going to have to be her. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, see, but that's, see, that's, that's, a, that's a true, I was going to say, with the laundry, you just shrink it. Now I know that, you know, John buys red socks every single week, and now I know where my red socks went. <laughs> Because when John comes over to the studio, he's always like, can I borrow a pair of socks? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, what do you need? He's like, only if they're red. Yeah. So, and they have to be new. Or a red blanket, or a sweater. So, and, I mean, you found you found a, a good way. And advice to guys, you got to, you know, if you're going to do something like that, you got to sell it. I mean, if it's if it looks like you did it on purpose, they're going to see right through that. So, you, so you, you have to make it look like chops. you tried. Yeah, there's a little chops involved. You, I mean, you got to... You gotta win a little bit of an Academy Award if you if you're a bad actor with it, you're you're gonna still be asked to do it. So, so you, you know, can't you, babble you on. You have to be convinced. This. You gotta be to convinced. Yeah, you gotta be convincing. So you have to be Denzel Washington. You have to you have to be of that caliber. You have to George Clooney this thing. I'm probably more like Danny Aiello than Denzel Washington. But. That's fair. <laughs> Danny Aiello, we'll take that. Fellow Brooklyn guy, I had yeah. to throw him in there. Former BK. So we are here to discuss the world of sports cards and their connection to the sports world, even though that has nothing to do with what we just <laughs> talked about. And we just got a message that came in, so I want to read it. What did we get here? Be sure to include some of your own laundry. Oh, so so we had another gentleman who's listening to the show, Orange Avenger, who said who is devout to the broadcast. We want to thank him for listening into Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora weekly, daily. And he said, in order to sell it, you got to, you know, you, you put in her laundry, you put in the red sock, but you have to put a little bit of your clothes yeah, so that you show a loss. Yeah, like, well, babe, if I did this on purpose, why would that be, you know, why well, would my shirt be in there? It's a great point. But it's got to be a shirt. Yeah, it's got you know that you're that you're okay losing. And here, I agree with the the that that assessment. And the other thing you want to sell that too is like that was my favorite shirt. I can't believe it's ruined. I can't believe it's gone. And in order to sell it as your favorite shirt, you have to wear it multiple days. I'll go one step <laughs> further. Wear it multiple days going into it, and so that she can't be like, I never saw you wearing that yeah. shirt before. You don't like that shirt, but you have to show a loss, folks. Now she could get back at you. By taking your Yankees jersey, popping that in there, in Orange Avengers case, your Saquon Barkley jersey, and having that get a little bit screwed yeah, up. Yeah, or my Mets stuff, which the way they're pl- the way they're playing now is he's throwing his own Mets stuff in there right now. Matter. Yeah, but here's the thing, and I want to preface this by saying this, okay? I do laundry, so out, unlike John and Orange Avenger, who are terrible husbands, I do laundry. <laughs> no, just kidding. They're not terrible husbands. Just awful people. Uh, <laughs> well, I haven't won Husband of the Year award, so maybe there's something to that. Is no, John's a good man. I'm kidding. I hope you can sense my sarcasm. No, I know. Okay. Yeah, but I do. I, I actually do laundry. I make it happen. So my wife does more than I do. She seems to do it like daily, where I like to let things kind of pile up and then do the mass load. That's that's. I just throw it out all in there at the same time. You know, I like when whites have been around long enough that you can throw them in with colors because then you don't have to worry about the merging. Well, I have an 18 year old, so we're, there's quite a bit of laundry getting so you're done doing almost laundry every day. Daily. So let's see what we have here. Orange Avenger said, I'll toss in the Beckham jersey. She won't know the difference. He's not a fan of Odell Beckham, but he is a Giants yeah. fan. 
Yeah, he's still there. You know, for there was a little period there where you were wondering if they were uh, he was on the market. Yeah, let's. You know what? I want to do this just for just for fun. I want to look up Odell Beckham autographed cards, and I just want to get an assessment of of what people think of him right now, of what Odell Beckham's going for. So he's got a card up right now. His autograph. He's got a really nice autograph. Yeah, it looks like Mickey Mouse. Seventy nine dollars, hundred and fourteen, yeah. thirty bucks. Yeah, his stuff's How actually. About this guy that doesn't care, thirty bucks. He's pretty. He's actually a reasonable. His autographs go for uh, reasonable pricing. Part of that is he's he's not a shy signer. He's he actually signs quite a bit of stuff. Yeah, eighty nine dollars. Um, this one with Andre Williams. I don't understand this. Eight hundred bucks. But some people overprice things. Three twenty five. A hundred dollars for the playoff ticket. The rookie ticket one that I have of Blake Bortles, Odell's selling for three twenty nine, three oh four eighty four. I mean, you could you could find some deals with this. I love the guy that's like thirty bucks. Get it on yeah, here. The, the Must average be a disgruntled Giants fan. It's something I know about the average uh, Beckham auto, unless it's like an extremely limited edition. Yeah, is is probably between sixty seventy bucks. Sixty so, seventy bucks. Yeah, so it's very reasonable. Okay. Um, for as productive as he is, the other guy that that brings a lot more, and it's my guy from the Steelers, which is which is AB. His stuff's always hitting three digits. It's very hard to yeah. to get Brown. a to get a uh, a cheaper Antonio Brown auto. Believe me, I've kind of looked to try, and it it never seems to be in 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 no sight. So so what's going on with this? I, I have this card that I'm trying to sell, and I've done pretty well. On the jump off, had a nice little start to selling some cards and stuff. And one of the ones that I've struggled to sell is Hayden Hurst, who was drafted in the first round, comes out of the South Carolina Gamecocks out of the SEC. He is the top tight end chosen, and he's going to the Baltimore Ravens. And I feel like I can't give this thing away for 99 cents. And it's his autograph, folks. Yeah. I mean, it's a real autograph. It's one of his first autographs that came out. It's part of the Panini Elite Group. What's going on? Tight ends and sports cards, uh, like we I even mentioned off the air, they're kind of like the little brother of yeah. offensive stars. Um, I, I think people reserve judgment. They're not a focal point to most offenses, unless you're the Patriots and Gronk. Um, even traditionally, if you look at some of the 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 the, the better tight ends that that aren't playing no more, your Tony Gonzalez's and those those guys, even Antonio Gates, yeah, you know, probably Hall of Famer, their cards just don't sell real well. I think with Hayden with Hayden Hurst, you got a few things in play. The position itself is 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 not helping them. I think the situation he's in, Joe Flacco's had some two or three straight bad years, and people are, are leery yeah. of that. And he's a rookie. So I think a lot of people are just between Flacco not playing very well, a rookie, and they're just reserving judgment. They want to see, I think they want to see him do it first before yeah. they buy in. Yeah, you know, and it's, I mean, I look at some of the other stuff I got up here. Corey Coleman's rookie card, Mike Evans' rookie card, Deontay Foreman's rookie card that's numbered to 99, Jamal Adams' rookie refractor autograph numbered to 99 from the Jets, to David Johnson's rookie card, who was uh, going into this past season the number one fantasy running back, Melvin Gordon's rookie card, who was in the top five. And and it is, It's it seems like... I would think that these things, especially because I'm not, yeah. I, I don't ask millions of dollars, but I feel like these things should go a little bit I quicker. think, and in, 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 in too, with football cards, a lot of people, in baseball, people will buy into players early. Like, people were buying Ronald Acuna yeah. stuff three years ago, just on hype, knowing he was even at least a few years away from making any sort of uh, impact. Right. In football, there's no minor league system. You know, it, it's football, as we all know, you can be really hyped up and, and can't miss and yeah. miss. And people don't want to invest until they're kind of, you know, in baseball, someone will put their money into a guy years ahead yeah. and take take a flyer. In football, more people um, kind of wait 
to see production on the field. Now, there are positions where that's not true. Quarterback, we talked about yeah. uh, a week ago, how some of these guys like Darnold, Rosen, yeah. um, you know, our Mayfield are bringing like more money than than Marino, Montana stuff. Yet they haven't even thrown an NFL pass yet. Yeah. So co- the quarterback position throws all what I just said out out the window. But the other positions, even even running back, sometimes people are a little bit um, hesitant on. So, but on guys that have proven themselves, like you know, like I said, I, I mean, I put out uh, the uh, rookie cards of Mike Evans as well yeah. as Melvin Gordon and David Johnson. I mean, the I would imagine that somebody's out there looking for a rookie card. Yeah, of these guys, and Mike Evans specifically, I I think he's one of the the better receivers in the game. But he's so overshadowed by the Antonio Browns, OBJs, those guys that are a little more kind of talkative, yeah. a little more media savvy. He kind of gets overlooked. But if you look at the numbers, he's he's in the same conversation with them. Yeah. But in in card wise, he's he's not. Um, and some of that is you know how how vocal you are, or if you're you know I hate to use the word, but a diva. Yeah. You are, you know, yeah. and he's not of that ilk, so I think it affects him it, it, card-wise, you know. I'm sure people in Tampa uh, uh, can tell you, like, you know, how good he is, but I think sometimes uh, if you're not familiar with him, you know, they may not be that aware. Yeah, you know, I, I just, and I, but I look at this and I see, you know, even the Bowman, like the last year of Bowman where they could actually put – the logos on and they were working with him and whatnot to have Mike Evans and, you know, Jamal Adams supposed to be a a strong player for the Jets on a team that doesn't have a lot of superstars to David Johnson. You know, I I, I would look at something like this and say, I'm not an Arizona Cardinals fan, but David Johnson, I'd want his rookie card. Yeah, I like David. I actually brought a Johnson card with me today. Um, You know, he's coming up. The other, the thing with Johnson, he had that, uh, Severe injury, yeah. so I think a little people. Uh, I think people are a little gun shy. They want to make sure he can make it back to the field, be the same DJ he was pre-injury. Um, you know, I think sometimes the market you play in obviously is a factor. You know, if David Johnson was on the Giants or Jets or, or the Cowboys, we'd probably be even talking to about him in a different, yeah, a different uh, way. Yeah, now, most people. Not. Won't argue with you, you know. Health, health. When he's healthy, he he's potentially in the top three running backs. Some some will make the argument one, you know, possibly the number one. Yeah. You know, I put him in the same kind of category. I'm biased being a Steeler guy, but uh, I look at him and Le'Veon Bell right now as the the two most talented back when it comes to not only running the ball but catching the ball out of the backfield. You know, the the kind of the the, the torch bearer there was Marshall Falk kind of changing the game with being a receiver from the running back position. And um, I put David Johnson and Le'Veon Bell kind of in that kind of category so of today's players. Yeah, you know, and, and the thing is, is, you know, David Johnson, he could do so much. You know, you think of, you think of Marshall Falk and, and what he was able to do, that if David Johnson stays healthy, what he could be. I mean, Marshall Falk kind of stood in, in a league of his own when he was mm-hmm. out there catching the ball out of the backfield and, and not being your traditional running back and being able to open the game up and what he did for the St. Louis Rams and how he aided them to get to the biggest stage of the NFL. So, you know, there's a lot of beauty with that. And once again, we're talking here live chatting. Good seeing the ticker running beneath us with John Newman of Newman Sports Cards on multiple sports card topics, including, you know, with, with Hayden Hurst. We talk about rookies. We talk about tight ends as, you know, the, them not being the, the big-time sellers. Yeah, but there is somebody who changes, and, and I know you I – want, I want you to get to the point you were just about to make, but there's a guy who, who doesn't function as a typical tight end in the sports card world, and I want to get to that too. So what were you going to say? Yeah, I was just going to say tight end's just not one of those glory positions. You know, those guys are usually quiet, lunch lunchbox guys, go to work, head down, Yeah, you know, and – you know, offenses don't run. Most offenses don't run through them. There's a few exceptions. I think Gronk in, in New England is the exception to the rule. Yeah. You know, and even his stuff, when you really look at it, doesn't for for as good as he is, doesn't bring as much as as you 
initially think. So I think tight ends just get kind of a, a bad rap for just not being very flashy. I think, and in, in specifically in Hayden Hurst's uh, case, I think people are looking at the team he's on, the quarterback there, him being a rookie. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of question marks like you were talking about. Uh, even with Mike Sapka, they got a really a whole new offense yeah. all at one time, which, you know, it might be an improvement on paper, but it'll be interesting to see how that gel or how it meshes. Being a Steeler guy, I'm hoping it doesn't. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speaking on that in Baltimore. So with that being said, we're going to take a quick step aside here on MixLR.com backslash wake up call DT. And we're going to be hanging out with you, continuing on Facebook Live. So if you're watching this video, tell your families, family, friends, coworkers, colleagues, tell your boss, I'm not doing any work right now, I'm watching this video. And make sure that you connect with us on our next video. So what we're going to do is keep with you live on MixLR.com backslash DT as we always do. And then we will end this video and you will see a whole new video pop up on your timeline speaking on the sports card industry with John Newman every single Friday hanging out in the second hour of Wake Up Call with Dan Satora on sports cards and the many topics that come up from that, different sports cards all the time. And like I said, John Newman brought the house with him today, and I, I, I don't know. I mean, he might he might be leaving lighter. His, his wife may be very happy because he'll come home and say, I only have three boxes, and she'll say, Why? And he'll say because Dan took one of them. By the way, can you I put would, this in the laundry? I wouldn't. I wouldn't tell her. That would be my our little secret. <laughs> nice, nice. I love it. So we'll take a step aside. We'll be right back with you. So follow us on to the next video. And thank you for watching and listening. We appreciate it. This is a wake up call. Fast break. Gear up with the real deal at Dry Sig Apparel. Creating what people are going to see and learn about you before they even meet you. Gear up for what you need for your team, business, or event. To look professional, look good, and feel good, outfit yourself at drysigapparel.com. That's D R E I S S I G apparel.com. The only place to gear up with the real deal. What's the universal language of a fan? Clapping your hands. With Fan Hands, the ultimate sports fan accessory, find your team color, slip them on, and start cheering on your favorite team with 11 different colors always in stock on FanHands.com, where you'll find the ultimate sports fan accessory. Real fans wear Fan Hands. This is Kira from Looking Glass Events, where we're always giving you a reason to celebrate. Whether you have a small business, large business, personal event, or wedding, we are available to plan and coordinate your dream event to life. Every detail, every step, Looking Glass Events is working with you all the way. Call us at 315-702-4653. That's 315-702-4653. Or contact us through our website, lgweddingsandevents.com. Looking Glass Events giving you a reason to celebrate. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is located on 3680 Milton Avenue in the Home Depot Plaza. It is your family-friendly sports bar and restaurant. Folks, some sports bars aren't family-friendly. Some family-friendly restaurants are not sports bars. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is proud to be both. It is that marriage that you've been looking for for years. The Wildcat Sports Pub is your home base for your sports bar and restaurant needs, games for the kids, indoor and outdoor activities, and enough things on the menu to come back every single week and get to try something new. They're open Sundays from noon to 8 p.m., Monday through Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Thursday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to midnight. For reservations and party information, call 315 315- 487-2222 for the Wildcat family-friendly sports pub and restaurant. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCall 
DT. We're hanging out with you here in the studios of Wake Up Call with Dan Satora with the man, John Newman, of Newman Sports Cards. He's hanging out with us every Friday. He sits here in the studio. We have some good conversation. He brings me a muffin. I get tea. I get a lot of nice stuff. But apparently I just sold myself as the worst husband in the world. So He, he did it. <laughs> <laughs> he did. No, it's, it's just, you know, you didn't sell yourself as the worst husband. It's just me and then you. That's all it is. Uh, probably true. <laughs> all joking aside, but... You know, I'm getting better. It's like, you know, I still got a few prime years left. Yeah. And then I've it's... never met your wife before. You haven't? I don't think I no. have. I will have to change have that. have to make that happen. Can we yeah. give her a shout out? What's her name? Yeah, Sharon. She's Hi, wor- Sharon. She's working hard on a Friday where I'm not, so. Happy happy Friday, Sharon. Yeah, she only works half days, though, so that, that's, that's nice. yep, on Friday. So we have Sharon out there, and then we have Jordan, who I know, your son yeah, Jordan. Yeah, he's at school. So that's... shout out to Jordan. Yeah. If you're in school watching this video, you may get in trouble, right? Uh, right. I don't think he is, but uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put it past. Yeah, he's yeah. probably got a couple of study. All halls, right, so, so you can watch us during study hall. So That's that fine. school's winding down. So he's in his last uh, probably ten days of high school life. You know, yeah. it's kind of. You know, as a dad, it you know when you sit and think about that, it's it's, it's weird like where you, did right? it, yeah, it's like where did the time go? Where's he going now? He's going he's going to go to OCC, nice. um, for probably a year or two, and then I think he may look into go finishing up at Cortland. So is he going to play um, any sports? Um, he's looking at it. He's I'll be honest with you, I don't I don't want to you know share all his business, but I will anyway. I'm I'm a terrible father so, <laughs> too. Besides a husband, um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, he had some. He had some opportunities to yeah. go play football, yeah. um, but they were a little further away than yeah. he wanted to to be from home. Yeah. So you know he he's gracious for for the opportunities. You know. Yeah. Um, but he decided he wanted to stay closer to home. Um, you know, uh, I won't mention the schools in fairness to them, but he did have uh, conversations with coaches that wanted him to. To come play there, and um, yeah. you know, he just said at this time that he didn't want to go that far. You know, he was a four-year varsity starter, took some shots. You know, football at the next level in college is is a whole different ball game than high school. Yeah. Um, it's really very physical, very demanding, and to balance that and your schoolwork is is, is sometimes difficult. Yeah, I think he kind of knew that. Yeah. Um, you know, playing the position, he's he's taken quite a few hits, um, and I think he just wants to focus on on, on his life's work and and you know getting that that phase of his life started, which he wants to do uh, physical therapy and training. So yeah. Um, you Nothing know. wrong with that. I love how you're like, I'm going to blow up my son's spot. And then you say all these amazingly <laughs> nice things about yourself. No, I know. I'm, you know, I think every day, let's, uh, I'll keep it real. I think, you know, um, I would have been nice to see him play. Yeah. Um, but it's also nice to know um, that he had the opportunity. You know what I mean? It wasn't where he wanted to. Yeah. And nothing ever came about it. That would have been a little more frustrating. Right. You know, it's it's what I told him, Dan, and I know I've had this conversation with you off the air. You know, I said, listen, I'd love to see you play at the next level, but this has to be your, you know, it's your life. This is your decision. Right. Um, but I also wanted him to know, you know, 10, 15 years from now, you can't go back and, and, and do have a do-over. Right. So whatever way you decide, you have to... Be sure that's that's you know that's, that's the way want. you want it. Yeah. So um, you know, and you know, I, I, he's a smart kid, so he knows. And and you know, OCC I believe has a junior football team that mm-hmm. he's he may uh, a JUCO team, and he didn't he did express that he might look into that. So that's he right. may wind up playing. Um, someone mentioned you know he's having a heck of a ba- senior baseball season. He you know. Um, at the plate and on the mound, he, he just got his uh, his tenth career win. He's he's four and one on this year with a one point four zero e- ERA. Yeah. So I think he may look at his time at OCC. It may be uh, working uh, on making that team p- potentially. Um, but I think he's you know his first thing is academics once he gets to college. So yeah, which is which is good you know. 
And whatever Jordan does, you know, he's a cool kid. I like him. Yeah, so. he's all right. You like him better than I do. Probably. No, I'm just kidding. No, it's all good. <laughs> he is a good kid. Yeah, Jordan, you know? and Jordan's always got an opportunity even just interning with Wake Up Call. Yeah, that would be, stuff. he's, you know, it's I know funny. I talked to him about it, I think, just it's a for, minutes. Yeah, for, it's crazy. Well, you've interviewed him. He yeah. for the positions he plays, you know, being a quarterback. Yeah. He's actually a fairly shy kid, not with me, but like for interviews and stuff like that. He'll he represents himself well and he talks, but he really doesn't seek that stuff out. So yeah. even, even the one time I was coming here and he was home, he's like, I don't want to be on camera. Yeah. So you like know, he do some stuff off camera. Yeah. So. See, but I see I selfishly want to work with Jordan Newman so I can say that Dance and Tour Broadcast Media has hired Jordan. Yeah. That's what I want there to say. You know. And they'd be like, Michael? And yeah. I'd be like, Well, you leave that part sure. out. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, to be determined. Yeah, yeah, no. But Jordan, Jordan's, Jordan's good people, so he, uh, he definitely can find a little home in here, even if he wants yeah. to be behind the scenes a little bit. You know, I was, you know, when I was younger, it's funny because, uh, you know, I wanted to be, I wanted to be a lawyer initially, and then someone said, you know, you got to go to law school for eight years. And then I said, nah, I don't want to be a lawyer anymore. Yeah. Um, but, you know, sports, being sports, journalism was something I, I even considered, too. I wrote, I mean, kind of nerdy, but I, besides playing sports in, in school, I also wrote uh, the sports section for, the high, for, for Liverpool's high school paper. Yeah. So I've always, you know, you know I write now for a, a baseball card, uh, online magazine so yeah I'm, I'm not i'm not trained but i'm self-taught as i like to say so. yeah but that's the thing you know and, and, and you love it you appreciate it look at your life now i mean yeah. did you think that you'd be sitting here today when you thought about it back in the day did you think that you would meet me and i'd be like hey Let's hang out on Fridays and talk about sports yeah, and be live crazy. and video and all. I mean, we've all been there. You know, when you're in high school and you get that uh, in English class, you got to do that speech in front of the class and it's thirty kids. Yeah. And I would dread those days. You know, I I would remember yeah. going to my English teacher, Mr. McEnany. I remember his name. So if you're out there, Mr. McEnany, shout yeah. out to Mr. But I would go to my teacher and say, "Can I do like a two thousand pay uh, two thousand uh, word?" written essay rather than to speak i'm trying yeah. any my best to get out of this thing and i remember one one of those occasions he said john you make no sense to me you play sports in front of 500 a thousand people you don't know and you can't get up in front of 30 people you do and and for five eight minutes and do a speech yeah and i had to explain to him when you're on an athletic field, you don't even notice the crowd. You zone, you zone them right out. You, right. The only thing you know. But is when you. you're here, and you got to do the same thing. It's it's me and the microphone, and I got to zone out. Yeah, you know, else, and especially in but the what, media. but when you're in class and you got thirty people staring back at you, yeah, that's a, that's a different out. thing. What I, what I you know, and for even what I do in my real job, I do an orientation. I'm an orientation facilitator at a transportation company, so I have a class. Yeah of 10 to 20 uh, people every week that I, I do for three days. So it's not even, I'm up in class about six hours each day for three days. Yeah. Um, you know, if you if you would have told me at my 17-year-old self what I'd be doing now, I would have thought you're crazy because I was shy, kind of. I didn't like speaking in front of, of, of people. Yeah. Even even coaching at the high school level to talk to parents. I, I would have thought you're crazy if you would have told me then I would, would be doing some of those things. Um, but I think when you get older, um, and I don't want to speak for you, but with me, and I think this goes for a lot of people, you lose... The reason you don't like talking in front of someone is 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 kind of ego because you're worried. I want them to like me. I want them to. I don't want to screw up a word, you know. Um, but when you get older, you realize you just do what you know. You do your job. You be yourself, and you. I don't want to say you don't care. I mean, I, I think everyone has a, an instinct that you want to be liked. Yeah. But I think you care a little bit less. You're just like I'm gonna be myself. And if someone likes me, great. And if they don't, who cares? What can I do about it? You know. So I think when you get older, you get a little less vain about perception, and you you it allows you to to be more vocal. You yeah. Know? You know, and I, and I think what it comes down to is 
I'm sitting here at 32 years old, but I've been broadcasting for 15 years. Yeah. And when I say that to myself, I'm like, that's almost half my life yeah. that, I, that I've been a broadcaster. So seven, you were 17. At 17, I w- would have never done something like this, to be to be honest with you. You know, yeah. you would have had like the black box over my face. Yeah. <laughs> the true Italian. <laughs> Wait, hold on, let me do it. <laughs> I get the true Italian, right? You have just like the... Welcome yeah. back here to Wake Up Call, Dan Tortora. Yeah, but that's how it is. And what? and and first and foremost, Dwayne Casey, can we just can we show some love here? Okay, we the North. This is the little rally cry of the Toronto Raptors. Dwayne Casey brought this team out of the dungeon. He's up for Coach of the Year. No, he won it, I believe. Didn't well, yeah, he yeah. Well, yeah, I think he might have. But this is the thing about Dwayne Casey, right? He was a finalist for Coach of the Year with Brad Stevens and whatnot. Dwayne Casey got got fired the year that he's up for Coach of the Year. The year that that, that America says he should be Coach of the Year. Number one team in the East, never happened for Toronto. The amount of wins they had in the regular season, never happened for Toronto. The amount of home wins that they had, never happened for Toronto. 34-7 at home in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And here's the funny thing. They fire him. And then on social media, they congratulated him for the Coach of the Year stuff. So here, this is my swan song for all you Toronto fans, okay, that don't understand it. I put up a poll, and 89% of you disagreed in some way, shape, or form with Dwayne Casey being fired. So yeah. we are the North, but we don't have a coach. He'll he'll resurface. I'm, I'm not a huge NBA guy. I thought the Knicks kind of screwed up because it it was rumored that he was probably going to lose his job, whether you agreed with it or not. So stupid. I thought the Knicks should have probably waited. I I don't even know the guy they hired, but I, I if I was I'm not a Knicks fan, but if if I was them, you're a I would've, smart person. Yeah, I would have waited, and now you Just get kidding. one of the better coaches reason. in the NBA. Yeah. Wait another two days with the potential to maybe get him. Yeah, and you know, and nothing against the guy they hired. I'm not even sure who it is. Um, you know, uh, you know, you, you can get one of the better coaches in the league, and you 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 don't take the opportunity. But the Knicks with with James Dolan, they they got they got a lot of problems. There. Yeah, so, so so no reveal yet. He's one of the finalists for coach of the year. Yeah, he may so, win it. Imagine so that. He yeah, wins coach he, of the he, year he, he, or, and on the on the year that he gets fired. Yeah, that's crazy. When it's like thinking. getting employee of the month and getting booted. <laughs> so most valuable. Play- here's here's your award, and you're no longer employed. <laughs> yeah, we'll ship you your award. We don't know if it'll yeah. get there in time. Come clean out your desk and pick up your award. Yeah. Can, by the way, can you do a press <laughs> conference and promote the team? It's because you know this this is a good look for the both of us, Dwayne. But most valuable player up for the award is Anthony Davis, New Orleans Pelicans. James Harden, Houston Rockets, and LeBron James of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Rookie of the Year, Donovan Mitchell, the Utah Jazz, Jason Tatum of the Boston Celtics, and Ben Simmons, who's a sophomore but yeah. pretends he's a rookie for the Philadelphia 76ers. The Sixth Man Award, Eric Gordon of the Houston Rockets, Fred Van Vliet of the Toronto Raptors, and Lou Williams, who used to play for the Raptors. So two either former or current Raptors of the three that are up for that. He plays for the Clippers now. Defensive Player of the Year, Anthony Davis for the Pelicans, so up for two awards. Joel Embiid of the Philadelphia 76ers. Rudy Gobert of the Utah Jazz. Most Improved Player, Clint Capella of the Houston Rockets. Spencer Dinwiddie of the Brooklyn Nets. And Victor Oladipo, who I covered out in Orlando with the Indiana Pacers. And up for Coach of the Year, Quinn Snyder of the Utah Jazz, Brad Stevens of the Boston Celtics, who I think is going to get it. Yeah, I think so. Or Dwayne Casey of the Toronto Raptors, but it should be Dwayne Casey, formerly known as a Toronto Raptor. So, But, you know, they could do that crazy thing that the Cincinnati Bengals did, where they're like, you know what? Marvin Lewis has been a great coach for us. We've had him for so many years, but we're going to fire him. No. Yeah. And yeah. we're going to let you know two games before he's going to get fired. And then they started a process, and this is how smart and intelligent I think Cincinnati is. I'm not beyond thinking that when they fired Marvin Lewis, kind of, sort of, at least verbally, that somebody in the, in the room went, hey, you know who I heard's available? Some idiot team let this Marvin Lewis guy go. We should call him. And then it's like, hey, do you want to tell Bob that he was on the team? And 
And they're like, no, 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 just let him do it. I mean, who came up with the idea of letting Marvin Lewis go and then sitting in a room going, you know who the best available coach is right now? Marvin Lewis. And it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, idiot, you just let him go. So maybe this is a thing with Toronto. Maybe they realize their sins and maybe they, you know, come back with their tail between their legs because some coaches, you know, Budenholzer, and I mean, there's guys that are signing on right now and moving forward. Becky Hammond, I'd love for her to get an opportunity. I don't know if she's going to get one. I don't know if she's going to get interviewed or what's going to happen with that. And, you know, I, I know Toronto fans are excited about Jerry Stackhouse, who was a rookie when Damon Stoudemire was a rookie for the Toronto Raptors. Stackhouse was with the 76ers. So I, I know that people are excited about that, but... You know, it's a situation it's they're disappointed it's with how the Cleveland series went. Yeah. And you can't fire 11 guys, okay? So you, you fired the head guy. But, but you can say that Kyle Lowry is not the highest paid player on your team, yeah. worthy of the – I mean, your highest paid player is DeMar DeRozan. Your second highest paid player is probably not on the team. Your third highest paid player is maybe Jonas Valanciunas, then Kyle Lowry. So that is your first mistake is the amount of money that they gave to Kyle mm -hmm. Lowry, and they need to restructure his contract. They're paying him like Steph Curry money. Yeah. And here's Steph Curry on the spectrum. Let me get in focus here. Here's Kyle Lowry past Mr. Newman's head, okay? They're treating him like it's like this. It's not like this. Steph Curry has championships. Steph Curry can shoot from my studio and make a shot in California. It is not like this. Kyle Lowry is not the guy. DeMar DeRozan, number one, should be your highest paid player. Kyle Lowry needs to, he's $31 million this year. That needs to be like between 12 to 15, 10 to 15, maybe. And they need to go out. They need to get back in the draft because they gave up both of their draft picks. They need to restructure contracts with Kyle Lowry and some of these other guys. They need to get some money back, and they need to go out and get some bets. They need an inside player who confronts you, is going to back you down, post somebody up, and get after it because they don't have any attacking power forwards, in my opinion, that are attacking throughout the whole game. They don't have a point guard, and they don't have any draft picks. So if I'm the Toronto Raptors... Dwayne Casey's not my problem. No. My problem is my personnel. DeMar DeRozan, when he scores 40 points, he's not winning the games necessarily. Yeah. We know that James Harden lost when he scored 41. LeBron James lost when he scored 42 and had a triple-double. Well, they had a great year, like you said, number one in the Eastern Conference. But I think, obviously, some of the things you, you just illustrated probably point out that they weren't built for the playoffs. You know, Well, they're, they're not built to play... LeBron James, and yeah. I know that anybody can argue who is, but the Indiana Pacers almost did it. You have to think about it. You have to have front court help, okay? LeBron James gets to the basket so effortlessly against Toronto, and that's because they have nobody in the interior of that defense that is going to front him or stop him. Teams that push LeBron James have someone that can play somewhat of good defense on him. Now, Golden State can outscore pretty much anybody, but when you look at the Toronto Raptors, I've asked for a power forward. Now, Serge Ibaka can hit jump shots, and I think that that's pretty and beautiful and wonderful. And not a lot of guys can do the stuff he does and have the range that he does. But with that being said, they don't have a true power forward. Jonas Valanciunas is finally becoming the center that I kind of want to watch. Kyle Lowry is I, 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 Kyle Lowry should be up for the sixth man award, and mm -hmm. he's making thirty one million dollars. And you know, and Kyle, this is not a, a witch hunt for you. It's just stating an obvious fact. If you are my highest paid player, I'm never going to win an NBA championship. And not, that's the truth of the matter. He's not going to give the money back either. So. Right. He's not going to, yeah. you know, that's, and that's one of those places like, like a Josh Rosen autograph right now or a Josh Allen or a Baker Mayfield is that someone's going to give you $399 and maybe that autograph five years from now is worth $19. That's but for cool. right now, they're going to buy it, and that's what Kyle Lowry did. Yeah, and, you know, he took you, advantage. Yeah, that's you, you know can't fault him it's for a business. It. It's right. a business, you know. Jimmy Garoppolo makes more money than Tom Brady. How does that make sense? Yeah, but he struck while the iron's hot. San Francisco sucks. They needed somebody to make him better, and that I mean that's the fact of the matter. Big Ben, you get Mason Rudolph right, and you get him later on. But let's say that Pittsburgh didn't draft Mason Rudolph. Let's say they that Big Ben goes. You know what, guys? I went through this off season. I'm really not feeling it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna well, hang it up. It's it's funny. Then you got to pay millions of dollars before for a first round before pick. the draft. He said, I I got two or three seasons left. 
Then they drafted uh, Mason, and he's got three to five. So he's found a fountain of youth all of a sudden. I don't since. think I don't think Big Ben's going three to five. Yeah, it, he might be, but it you know what kind of Big Ben are you going to have right. in year four? And the where clock is eventually has to yeah, run out on Big Ben? Yeah, and where is Mason Rudolph in, in this progression? Right, you know, as a player, and is he um, the guy? You know, I, Davis Webb was drafted to be the heir apparent to Eli Manning, and they don't seem to like yeah, him that much. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. Christian Stuff. Hackenberg, they don't seem to like him in with the Jets. Well, the Jets, you the know. The Jets have Christian Hackenberg, who Bryce they don't like. Petty. Bryce Petty, who they don't <laughs> like. And these are not people that were given to them. These are not people they got in a trade. They drafted these now people. They, got they drafted rock. people they don't even like. That's like bringing a girl to the dance that you are not attracted to that is really annoying. A girl that's like, oh my god, this is great. A girl, a nasally girl. You did that like, pretty good. Did you worked on that. I did. I'm a I'm a Kardashian <laughs> in my in my trade. You know, oh my god, come on. I'm not even trying. Yeah, just... and you got to do it. You got to you got to get a little salsa, a little flavor, and then you got to go nasal. You got to be like, you don't even know me, I, Rodney. Okay. Back, yeah, you got to go with it. Back in the day, I could do a pretty mean. Fran Drescher impression. Oh, so. I like doing the Janice laugh. <laughs> That's a Janice laugh from Friends. She's yeah. like, she's like, oh, is that you, Ross? Eh. <laughs> <laughs> I have nightmares with that stuff. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, we have some fun with that. So that is that is Christian Hackenberg. When you think of Christian Hackenberg's relationship with the Jets, just think of, oh my. God. Yeah, they collect, apparently, Chandler? Yeah. Some that's... people collect cards. The Jets apparently collect quarterbacks. So <laughs> That's very yeah. true. And if they were collecting cards, if you were if we are paralleling the Jets cards to quarterbacks, <laughs> they'd have to they you would have to pay them. Yeah. Or they would have to pay you to take them. Yeah, it's crazy. Christian Heck now let me show you something. Because you'll appreciate this. Jets fans will appreciate this. Okay? Because this I'm gonna show you two cards that I have in my collection. One of them that's worth money, and one of them that is probably not even worth the stamp that I'm going to send, and that's because the Jets don't like this guy. Okay? I have a numbered to 99 in the world, two-color Marcus Mariota. I haven't put this up here yet. Marcus Mariota, two-color, unparalleled autograph, right, mm -hmm. that we have right here, 99 in the world, two-color jersey. I have a two-piece, well, it's a one-piece, but cut here, unparalleled, 199 in the world, Christian Hackenberg. Okay? I feel like I could sell this for, like, 20 bucks. I feel like I would have to, you know, if I had a sister, I'd have to promise you a date with her to sell yeah. this thing right here. Okay? This is like, is like the girl where she's like, Babe, I love you, and you're so sweet, and you're so wonderful. <laughs> That's the difference. Look at these cards. Look at them. Christian Hackenberg never got a chance to be an NFL player because the Jets didn't want to give it to him. They drafted him. They yeah. hated this guy, well, and they put him on the roster. I don't get yeah, it. If you, re if you read it. the reports, I don't get it. Half the room didn't want to touch him, and the other half did. And that sometimes when you get in a situation like that, it's unfortunately bad for the player because well, yeah. half the organization because now everybody in the NFL kind of thinks well, this you. guy must be garbage. Yeah, you get a bet, you get a rep, and may not be earned, you know. But you know, hopefully for his sake, he gets he gets an opportunity somewhere to uh, either prove or disprove the you know uh, the critics. You yeah, know? hopefully he gets an opportunity somewhere. I heard Cleveland's always looking for quarterbacks. Yeah. You know, when you Man. think about the Jets with all the quarterbacks they have to not to not really even hit on one of these guys, it's it's insane when you think about it. I think that the Jets, and I'm not talking about this season because we don't know what's going to happen with Sam Darnold. I think that the Jets, and I'm going to say this and I'm going to mean this because I've said this before, but I want you to know, and this is this is on video so you can see my face. Okay, the Jets of 32 NFL franchises have the worst quarterback situation in the country below the Cleveland Browns. Because Tyrod Taylor is not bad, okay, and they just drafted Sam Darnold, and there is a hope that, that he could be something. 
But, or no, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm talking, I'm, I'm mixing them here. So Tyrod Taylor and Cleveland Baker Mayfield. I'm not a Baker Mayfield fan, but I'm just saying. The New York Jets have been atrocious. Awful. And the thing is, they don't want to play Bryce Petty, so they make him the third string guy, and then everybody gets hurt because God's like, hey, watch this. Mm -hmm. And then Christian Hackenberg, they won't even play him. They will, they will call Vinny Testaverde. I think calls to Chad Pennington. How's your shoulder? How's your elbow? But it's like Christian Dad. Hackenberg, from the day he got in, was like, screw this guy, we're never playing. This, this, Why'd you drink? this wasn't reported, but I have an inside source. They actually called Joe Namath. Yeah. But when they called him, he actually had a, a few pops. So he's like, I really, really love you. And they, <laughs> and yeah, they, uh, awesome. they, uh, they called they, Joe Namath and he <laughs> said, and yeah, John actually man, called. Can I kiss you? Yeah. And then they said, all right, yeah. we're, we're going to Yeah, John called up and he's like, hey, man, they don't like this Christian <laughs> Hackenberg guy. And he was like, John, I just got to say something. Can I say something? Can I kiss you? That's exactly how it was. That was it. That's Joe Namath. See, listen, there's the, there's the Joes that we have on Wake Up Call, like Joe Theismann, okay? Great guy. Awesome to talk to. Never spoken to Joe Namath because I'm a little concerned that he might want to make out with me. Yeah, and what do you and, and you know Brock he might Bush, be the last best quarterback they had. Just how scary is that when you really think of it? I know and people want that to say are, Chad Pennington, but he yeah, didn't stay you know healthy. what? Pennington actually did have a couple yeah. good years if he stayed healthy. Don't sleep on Richard Todd. That was before your day, but it's all good. Know, that's why Google exists. Does anybody remember the Jets quarterbacks? Like, should we do this? Let's do this before we take a little break here. I'm going to put Jets quarterbacks. Jets quarterback by year. Let's do this. Let's have some fun with this. I want to have some fun. List of the Jets' starting quarterbacks, because this will just make me have a good time. Okay? So, <laughs> yeah. The first guy is Dick Wood. <laughs> so, we, we've started off the conversation <laughs> in such a healthy way. Downhill <laughs> Dick Wood. When you start off with Dick Wood... <laughs> There's really nowhere to go in your life. Totally, that wasn't even scripted. That, no, that's it wasn't just, scripted. That's for real right there. Yeah, Dick Wood. So uh. let's go back in time here. Josh McCown, serviceable. Ryan Fitzpatrick, every other year, every two years, he has good and bad. Geno Smith is a wide receiver. Michael Vick, yeah, whatever. Mark Sanchez had a good couple of years to start. But Brett, fumble. <laughs> Brett Favre, I think the whole, the whole notion with Brett Favre is that he came into the Jets organization and they handed him a playbook and he th and he was like yeah that's nice and he just went yeah, out there and he just, goes go get open yeah he, I, there was a notion that he did not read the playbook at well, all he doesn't he like, was like train, screw you can't he was so, just gun for hire so. before that brooks ballinger so i know and and i think i know brooks and so chad pennington a little bit of that vinnie testaverde who who's uh was a hundred when he left rick Meyer toward the end of his career ray lucas folks Neil O'Donnell, Glenn Foley, Frank Reich, who who was the you know who was recently with the Eagles and has now moved on and whatnot. Uh, who else we have? Yeah, Boomer, don't the, forget Boomer. Yeah, Sonny. Boomer. I forgot Sonny's about him in. for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Brownie Nagel, who I remember when Brownie he was Nagel. at Louisville, I thought he was going to be a, a, a little how, bit of a better about, NFL. How about this guy? How about this guy? The draft that had oh, damn that had six yeah. six players drafted, multiple Hall of Famers. And instead of drafting Dan Marino, they drafted Ken O'Brien. Yeah, they'd like a do-over. That was fun. Well, look how long he played, though. You know, I know he's not Dan Marino. Yeah. But, you know, looking at the screen, he got seven years out of KOB. Yeah, Richard Todd, Don, Joe Namath. And, and I'm sorry, folks. When you got a player like Dick Wood... <laughs> I never, Wait, I, I never heard of the guy, so right. probably. And this is the thing; it's nothing against him. I just, I just, you know, parents have to look at names. Yeah, I don't can, know. Can I just make a statement? I'm going to make a statement, and then we're going to go to commercial break. We're going to go to fast break, and I'm going to shut off the video in this moment because I want to leave you with this statement. So please, please oblige me in doing this. I'm going to put this. I'm, I'm going to get us set up here to go to a fast break. And I want to leave you with this notion because I love you all dearly. How could it be so difficult, so hard, when you have Dick Wood? We'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I never heard of the guy. Dick Wood, man. He's there. We'll be back in a moment. 
This is a wake up call, Fast Break. This is Jimmer Sikowski, owner operator of Chick fil A Cicero, 7916 Brewerton Road in Cicero, right in front of the Home Depot. I had a deep feeling that God wanted me to do something bigger with my life and to help people, help others. I kept putting Chick fil A in my life, and I realized as I was going through the franchise selection process that uh, positively impacting the lives of others was really core to what we do here at Chick fil A. First of all, it starts with the food. The food is brought in fresh daily, you know, we bring in local produce, we prepare to order in the kitchen, we hand bread our chicken, we hand spin our milkshakes. It's, it's great food. It doesn't taste like fast food. I, I think the second thing is, is the way people feel when they come in a Chick-fil-A restaurant. It's different. We, we try to treat people with intentional kindness here, which is very different and deeper than good customer service. And so you know, I think it feels remarkable for most people to come in a Chick-fil-A restaurant. And then lastly, the impact that we try to have in the community is very different. It's a big part of the expectation of every operator of a Chick-fil-A restaurant is that they're actively engaged in their community, they're a leader in the community, and they're, they're making a difference. When they realize that what we're striving to do is to shine a little light in their life, that's a very, very different experience uh, than you will have in any other quick service restaurant. And it's that remarkable experience that I think people will emotionally connect with. Gear up with the real deal at Dry Sig Apparel. Creating what people are going to see and learn about you before they even meet you. Gear up for what you need for your team, business, or event. To look professional, look good, and feel good, outfit yourself at drysigapparel.com. That's D-R-E-I-S-S-I-G apparel.com. The only place to gear up with the real deal. What's the universal language of a fan? Clapping your hands. With Fan Hands, the ultimate sports fan accessory, find your team color, slip them on, and start cheering on your favorite team with 11 different colors always in stock on FanHands.com, where you'll find the ultimate sports fan accessory. Real fans wear Fan Hands. I'm George Townsend of Honda City with some good advice when buying a new car. The true cost of owning a new car is determined by the appraised value when you trade it. No vehicle appraises higher than a Honda. Next, look for low APRs and deep discounts. You also want low maintenance costs and great fuel economy. That's why my advice to you is to buy a new Honda. Looking pre-owned, visit our Honda Certified Used Car Center. Honda City, 7140 Henry Clay Boulevard, Liverpool, or hondacity-cny.com. It would be a pity if you don't shop. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. We're going over Monday through Friday. We're here from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. But when the man John Newman's in the building, we always end up going past 11 a.m., which is cool because he has the day off, and it's, and it's all fun. And the cool thing about today is, and John, I'm going to put you on the spot here, because I don't know what you got going down. So do you have a busy Friday? Fridays are usually pretty uh, laid back for me. All right, me, cool. So, so I, I'm saying this because I had two meetings today. Yeah. They both got postponed, which means that I think that after we go off the air, that we should hang out and do some card stuff. Yeah. That's, I'm, you think I'm, about that. I'm down. I'm in. And you're going to buy me lunch. We can do lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I like bad lunch. Bad father, bad husband, and, and now a bad friend. Yeah, what is going if on? you look at the screen, you can tell I haven't missed many lunches. So. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's all good. We love John. We love John so See, much. Look, John, this guy likes lunch. John Newman of Newman Sports Cards. Awesome fellow. We're here with you hanging out and uh, you know, and just, just uh, talking about some dickwood this morning. And yeah, I, I, had, I didn't see that one. Should I start the show? That off? one was like a left hook. I didn't see it, and my knees buckled. Yeah, you know, like I, I just, I kind of want to, I kind of. That's how I want to preface. I just want to randomly during the show being like, you know, it's time to talk about Dickwood. Yeah, we, we wanna, should do a whole segment on that on that's, Dickwood. 
when you know, we're more prepared because that one i don't think either one of us so. no and in this bat card i almost wonder if there's dick wood in it because it says it's <laughs> well it's got wood i don't know it's got wood i don't know part. if it's got dick wood wow. but it's all good <laughs> we're a family show and the thing is if anybody says to me dan you were talking about dick wood that's really inappropriate i'd be like really a former jets quarterback yeah, is inappropriate jets, it's real it's a real guy you have to think about you know if you called you know, if your last name was Tur, T E R E, you don't name your daughter Molest. I mean, you got to you got to think about yeah, this I stuff. Think I, I'm, I'm assuming his parents are, are probably no longer with us, but I, I, that was one of those questions you ask him, like, why? Yeah, just one word. Right? Why? <laughs> well, we we named him Richard, and we need and you need to call him Richard. Nobody's going to call him Richard. Yeah, you got to do the math. Wood. I don't, what I want to know is what his middle name is, because that would have been where if, if I was Dick Wood, you wouldn't know it. I would be using my middle name, you know. Yeah. Whatever it is, it could be Herkimer, you know. His middle name was you probably know. Long. Yeah, it's that's, probably Longwood. Someone out there, do where, where, where's our research department? Find out what Dick Wood's middle name was. Oh, what is, what is? Oh, I love this! I love this. One of the uh, one of the people listening in said that they they could have named their kid Brady because their last name is Bunch. They could have yeah. been Brady Bunch. That one ain't terrible. I actually like that. Yeah, that, that one's that, not terrible. The Brady Bunch is a fun, wholesome show that brings people together. Dick Wood somehow separates the room. Yeah, well, I mean. You can't separate a room be, more than saying Dick Wood unless you're Christian Hackenberg. You know, even with my own son, his name's Jordan. Uh, I'm a, since I'm already a, a bad husband, why, why stop <laughs> earlier? Um, my wife wanted to name him Henry, um, you know, Henry Newman after her grandfather. Yeah. And I just said, Hen, you know, Henry is kind of an old man's name. With a, and it is Jordan's middle sure. name. So we settled... We settled on it being his middle name, but I'm like, yeah. he's, he's not going to use that name, Sharon. He's going to go whatever his middle name we give him. He's going to probably go right to that. Yeah. And I said, you run the risks, too, with the name, you know, Henry, that when he's 14, he may come back and try to kill us, you know, for naming <laughs> him that. So, for naming him so we compromised, and his Jordan Henry Newman. Yeah, so. I think that you, what, what most people should do, should should name their child with first and middle name, and then have the last name like Norman Bates. Yeah. Norman Bates Tortora. And I'm like, that would be awful. NBT. But I will say this I dated a girl whose first name rhymed with my last name. Yeah. And I couldn't, I was like, that's, it's just not going to go over well. And I felt like there would, I feel, I was like, I feel like this name is going to be said in a high profile divorce someday. She would have been Aurora Tortora. I like that. I don't. I, I like it, but I, you no. know. You wouldn't have it's liked got her. a nice, it's got alliteration. As she's not say. a terrible person. She's just, she was just an interesting person. Yeah, that's a kind of. Can a I say interesting? Name. It's a different name in general. Or, yeah. Or, you know, first thing I think of would is that Aurora Borealis. Yeah, that's what lights. everybody thinks of. So <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's not going to work out. I like Kate. Kate Tortora. Yeah, yeah that worked. That she she that's, worked. I think you, you got the right name. Well, and I said to Kate, I was like, her her maiden name was Kowitzki. I said, thank Jesus that your parents had the 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 for, the 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 brains to not give you a middle name that started with a K. Yeah. She would have been KKK. Yeah. And and you know, it's a, you, parent. You got to think about this. Yeah, stuff. it's amazing some of these names that, you, that the parents have. don't. I don't know what what happened that day. Yeah. Um, maybe they just didn't think. You know. Uh, now, I wanted to name, it, it didn't happen either, I wanted to name my son, one of the candidates was, speaking of that, was Blaze. And, uh, was Blaze? Yeah, my wife That's my awesome. wife shot it down. Yeah, I mean, there's some really crazy names that we've seen. Judy Swallows, Je Jesus Condom, Wang Lickin, Bend Over. I mean, there's these, and these are really people's, these are real Dixie names. Normus, um... I can't even yeah, some jack of these, off. Some of these, the FCC might get involved if we actually yeah. say them. Wendy Wacko. Brownie. Brownie. <laughs> Sh Shittles. 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 Brownie Shittles. Dick Pound. <laughs> Peter, Peter Boner. Peter Boners. Heath Cockburn. I mean, some of these names, you just... Look at that one. On the, Woody on, Held. 
Cleveland Indians. My favorite baseball guy and played for the Tigers was Rusty Cunts. <laughs> Real player. Awful. Yolanda Squat Pump. <laughs> Dr. Porn Sack. There's some crazy names that Oh, I love this! There's a person named Jurassic Park! That is amazing. That can't be real. That's got to be real. They had to change their name. Like, they weren't born Jurassic Park. Oh, I would love to name my child Jurassic Park Tortora. I, that would be amazing. I always come up with crazy names with, with Kate. You know, things that we should name our kids. I'm not having any more kids. Uh, th those days are over, but I almost want to now. Just this You want to have more this kids? This whole segment, just to give them a crazy name. I love and how we right. just got from Orange Avenger. Is this a Howard, is this Howard Stern or is this Dan Tortora? <laughs> we went off the tracks. Yeah, I went way off the tracks. Jokes on you, FCC. You don't have internet rights. And those so. are all those are all real names that you just said. I mean, that's that's yeah. These that's are insane. these are all allegedly real names. And I've been around people that have had some crazy names. You just have to think about it. And when in doubt, think about naming your child Dickwood and don't maybe don't do it. Now the Cleveland Browns. And the thing is, I have nothing against Richard Wood. I'm sure he's a phenomenal person and a phenomenal player. I don't think that he was very fond of being Dickwood. Now I don't know. He's fond enough not to change his name, or maybe the media made yeah, him Dickwood. Yeah, I don't know. Nothing harder no, than Dickwood. At least he's not Chrissy Everett, as Jim Rome told. Uh, or uh, remember Jim uh, Jim Everett? Yeah. Jim Rome called him Chrissy Everett, and then they had a fight right on the set. That's ridiculous. What was that? What was one of the? Oh, uh, Terry Rozier called. Eric Bledsoe, Drew Bledsoe. Oh, really? And that was a good one. I like yeah. that. Let's look at the Cleveland Brown quarterback since they came back in 99. How many computer screens do you have? I have seven. Right. Ty, Tim Couch, Ty Detmer, Doug Peterson, Spurgeon Wynn. That's another name. <laughs> Kelly Holcomb, who almost got them to the playoffs. Jeff Garcia, Luke McCown, Trent Dilfer, Charlie Fry, Derek Anderson... Brady Quinn, Ken Dorsey, Bruce Gradkowski, Colt McCoy, Jake DeLome, Seneca Wallace, Brandon Whedon, Thad Lewis, Jason Campbell, Brian Hoyer, Johnny Manziel, Connor Shaw, Austin Davis, Robert Griffin III, Cody Kessler, Deshaun Kaiser, and Kevin Hogan. And get this, folks, they will have a new starting quarterback this season. I think they've had a new starting quarterback every Oh, Okay, let's go to it like this. So since 2011, they've had a new starting quarterback every year. Because yeah, Colt McCoy was 2010 and 11. Yeah. So Colt McCoy to Brandon Whedon to Jason Campbell to Brian Hoyer to Josh McCown to Robert Griffin III to Deshaun Kaiser to now probably Baker Mayfield. We are looking at the team, the Cleveland Browns, having a different starting quarterback mm -hmm. in the last eight years. Crazy. It's insane. It's like spaghetti. You just throw it against the wall. Hope something sticks. Hope you something know. sticks. Yeah, I heard spaghetti You know, you were talking uh, earlier with Mike Sopka on, on quarterbacks. The guy that you didn't... <laughs> the, the, <laughs> we need to do a whole show on this. No, because because really? I'm looking up stuff while we're talking, and we're on <laughs> video with you, so we're looking at the screen laughing. You can't see it. I got to do a picture in picture. Actually, I think I can bring this up. You know yeah. what? Let me do this. This is what I'm going to do. Because because we are high tech savvy here, I'd like to think on the show we we do our yeah. best to be. I'm gonna put these names up like they're going. So go ahead and say what you were saying. Well, I was gonna say another guy that's out there is training to get back is is Johnny Manziel. Yeah. And I gotta be honest with you, you know, may, people people <laughs> may not agree, but I I I actually like him. I think he's he's got a chance if he can. Stay out of trouble and get his life on track. I think he could he could be a player. Like felt we got well, we got <laughs> the only thing better than having Dick Wood as a quarterback is having is Dick, Dick Felt as his backup. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna put these we're gonna put these up right <laughs> now. Man, China. Okay, so we gotta we gotta put these up right now. We're gonna I'm gonna add these folks. So you're we're, you're gonna see us go off screen for a second just because I have to. I have to add these for you. Your phone's blowing up like crazy. Are people are people responding to what we're talking about right Let's now? Let's see. I feel like you're probably nah, just some card stuff. Oh my goodness! Yeah, he's always he's always selling his cards. We're gonna get we got to get these pictures up right now. Yeah, this is crazy because these make me so happy. So let's let's get these up for you folks. 
So you can see us here hanging out. These are some of the things that we saw. Well, while John was talking, this beloved yeah. Disney character took a turn. So there is a little resemblance. I mean, if you look close. Yeah. You know, I don't know if the real Donald Duck has a, a long mugshot. blonde hair and getting arrested was Donald Duck. Yeah. The, the beak is there. I mean, you can see the beak. I love it. You know. Your phone is insanely going yeah, on. You must be selling cards like a mad no, person. Not. So look at this. Arrested Donald Duck. I just, I mean, as a Disney fan, I wouldn't picture this with that. And then this we could put up because he's a former Patriot. And the thing that makes this even worse is that the Patriots' O logo was bent over. Yeah. Dick felt. Defensive halfback. For that bent over Boston Patriots, there what, you know, which means because they they believe they were in the same division with the Jets. Right. Dick Felt could have sacked Dick Wood. When you really think about that, you know what? Let's let's can we put them side by side? <laughs> can we do that? Can we make a side by side? Let's make a side by side. Let's see what we got here. We need a picture of Dick Wood. Uh -huh. We need one that says, there he "Oh is. well, don't look up Dick Wood on Google, folks." <laughs> Because we just, I just, you know, I don't know, the studio computer yeah, might crash right now. I looked up Dick Wood not thinking about what it meant, and yeah, that wasn't pleasant at all. That's, <laughs> that wasn't, that wasn't look nice at, at all. Why are people doing that? Which one? What do we have here? Dixie Normous. <laughs> These names are wonderful. <laughs> where, where is Dick Wood? We gotta get a picture Dick Wood. I gotta put up Dick Wood Jets. Please don't look up Dick Wood because there I is. did. There he is. There he is. Here we got him. Okay. Here's Dick Wood. So, wow, he looks like he's like fifty years old in that picture. We need to get a Dick Wood. He did he did pass away in two thousand fifteen. Yeah, we need to, we need to get a good picture of Dick Wood on the Jets. Where do we have Dick Wood? Here is this Dick Wood? No, that's Larry Graham. You know, they don't like to there put up is. a lot of there pictures of Dick Wood. Here he is, we got him. Former Jets quarterback and assistant. So we're going to get him up here and put him in the same boat here. He also played for the Giants. So the cool thing about that is, or not the Giants, the Dolphins. So he could have been sacked either way. But let's let's get a little, can we get a side-by-side -side here? Let's get a side-by-side. -side. So, ladies and gentlemen, I proudly present to you on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, Dick Wood and Dick Felt. Choose your dick. Choose, choose your dick. May the best dick win. Which dick Whatever. would you? Which dick would you choose? Dick Felt or Dick Wood? What do you think? Yeah, Jets or Jets or Patriots? I don't like either one. You don't so. like either one of them. So, and the thing is, no matter what happens, we can always revert back to Donald Duck. Yeah, that just it's just amazing. I don't, you know. I love it. I love that somebody named their child Donald Duck. <laughs> I really do. And that this person got arrested. You want to know why they got arrested? Because they wanted their. They wanted their fame of being on the screen as Donald Duck without having the duck. They were probably tortured by all those cartoons their whole life. Yeah, I just hope his wife is named Daisy. That would just make that would make it awesome. Everything would be right in the so, world. So obviously, you know, rest in peace. And, and we're not. We're, I'm just. I, I just. I wonder the parents' thoughts. On, yeah, I just. I don't get that one. That's a head scratcher to me. You know. Yeah. You know. Uh, here we're. You know. I didn't even want to name Jordan Henry. Right. Well, you the know, thing is, like, if if you're in if you're in the draft, right, and you're Mel Kiper, and you're trying to have a conversation about this, you're literally saying, "So, on your team, would you rather have Dick Wood or or Dick Felt?" Yeah, I think Mel Kiper was probably about three years old back then. But he might have been the three year old Mel Kiper might be been saying that, you know. You know, but I mean, choose your choose your. <laughs> Choose your thing here. We're gonna we're gonna move on. But that's I mean that's where we went today. That's where we're going. We're not we're not saying anything that's wrong. We're just we're this speaking real, on former yeah, quarterbacks. Yeah, this is real stuff. You know, it's real sports talk. Dick Wood and Dick Felt, and y'all thought that Johnny Manziel was a problem. So yeah. with that being said, you brought some cards. Yep. Let's see what you got. Yeah, that's gonna be a tough act to follow. But we spoke about them earlier. Uh, you know, uh, this is a David Johnson card. Yeah. What I like about this one, it's an auto card, but it's it's called an extra points parallel, meaning they only make <laughs> Orange Avenger because we had to, your computer updates and and as you know we have to do studio updates and stuff. He said, Now I know why your computer took forever to, to start 
You were looking up Dick Wood. So, yep. and the joke's on you. I was looking up Dick Feltz, but it's all good. We, yep. we found it, and the computer's okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that segment's going to be legendary and hard to top, but, yeah. you know, it is what... There's nothing harder than Dick Wood, and there's no better yeah, feeling than Dick Feltz. That will be harder so. to top. So, yeah, I, I, don't, you know. I don't really... <laughs> So this is Dave. I didn't, th- I didn't know we were going to talk about that today. <laughs> no, and it all started with it just popping up at the screen, right. and it just that was you the, know? that was the end. A dick popped up on the screen. We ended up with two of them yeah, before the was, end of the show. Was, uh, you know, here they yeah. are for all of you. I'm completely unscripted, contrary to popular <laughs> belief. <laughs> I can't get enough of this picture. <laughs> there they are. There they are. This is what I'm going to do one day. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put this up in silence. Crazy, what well, you know? This looks like that. Someone thing at the did end of a it once. Movie. The crazy uh, professional athlete name. So I mean, yeah. Rusty Cunts is in the mix. Um, I didn't even know about the two football guys. So you know, you can add them to the the list now too. So. Yeah, they're gonna be a part of it. Crazy yeah. names that parents should have thought through. Yeah, like man, like especially if you have two parents. Okay, you think one of them would have figured out and like stopped the other one. The funny thing that you know, about it is that the parents were like, oh, my God, that's great. That would make more sense if this was a single parent. Like, I can name them anything I want, and I don't have a husband or wife to stop me. Right. But if this, this is two parents involved, like, I don't know what happened there. I don't know what's going on. But with that being said, we're going to transition as seamlessly <laughs> as we possibly could to the sports cards that John Newman of Newman yeah, Sports Cards is brought all, here. all the names I got today are normal names, so we're, okay. we're going to go back to uh, uh, to basics. Um, the first the first card I brought is a, I just got this actually yesterday. It's a David Johnson. It's the extra points parallel from. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm we're sorry, still look, we're still looking up sports names. I'm looking up I'm looking up other names, folks. That's all. John, can, I'm sorry. Yeah. I found Dick Trickle. Man, we had an Ascar guy. Yeah, he's, Dick Trickle. He's famous. Yeah. What's what's so bad about... The, God Sham God. Yeah. I have his rookie cards. Go up... Oh, go up You know, one. God Sham God, I believe, was Muslim, and he had God in his name twice. And so I always yeah. found that interesting. God From Square, Providence. Rabbit Marineville. Well, there was Andy Freeze. What's so terrible about Andy, Andy Freeze? Oh, yeah, yeah. It took yeah. me a minute. Andy Freeze. It's all right. Boots Day. Boots Day from Wolfgang Wolf. Yinka Dare. I remember him. Remember Yinka Dare from yep. the Nets. Yep. Dick Pelt. Yeah, that's another one. Rusty Cunts has got to be on this list. I, 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 so we have Dick Felt, Dick Wood, and Dick, Dick Paul. And all in the new, all in the tri-state area, nonetheless. Right. Samoa Samoa. Blue Moon Odom. I think that's a fantastic yeah. name. Mike, Mike Lemon Jello. What's so terrible about that? Nothing. Fabian Assman. Yeah. That's a that's a pretty sweet name. What other names we got here? Credence <laughs> Clearwater, Clearwater Quoto. Quoto. Some, uh, you know what you know what Shooty his parents you know what band his parents liked, I believe. Your high you know, Credence Clearwater, his parents were big, Oh yeah, probably fans. Rival. Of, Your Highness, I like that name. <laughs> Chief Kickin' Stallion Sims, that can't be real. This guy looks terrifying. Ben Gay, I remember Ben Gay. We all know Ben Gay. He played, Shocker. And Ben Gay played for the Browns, by the yeah. way. Urban Shocker. Stubby Clap. If you have Stubby Clap, seek medical attention. There you go. Sonny Six Killer. <laughs> World Be Free. Remember him? Yeah, World Be Free, and then we all know that we have... Oh, Ruben Boomshay Boomshay! Yeah. I love Ruben Boomshay Boomshay. Have a look, Doob. I love that one. Earthwind Moreland, you know who his family liked. He was he was a Patriot as well. I love the people that Fair Hooker played for the Browns. So Fair Hooker played for the Browns Same. and Ben Gay. Yeah, love it. Guy Wimper. I remember him. I am hip. Mm-hmm. I love that one. Captain Moreland. Who else do we have? Napoleon Outlaw. That's a fine name. I don't. I'm not. I'm not opposed to that. Scientific Map. That's awesome. That was awesome. Play for Florida. He didn't even want his picture posted. Just put my name up. I don't put a face to my name. Dick Buckus. Yeah, Dick Buckus. Probably the you know when you Hall of Fame names that, yeah. that that one gets in. One of my favorite names because I love to say it. Chris Fuamatu Maafala. Yeah, that's a Steeler. I, Play I, for the Steelers. I couldn't even say any. And I'm Tim Biaka Batuka. Razor Shines. Yeah. Pops Mensa Bonsu. He's been around recently. 
Not what's, so, what's so terrible about that? Don't. What? I'm not reading that one. I'll talk to you about it later. All right. I'm going to tell you about it later. What is this guy's name? Wonderful Terrific. That's an interesting name. That's all they got. What's your guy didn't make it? Who Rusty, was your Rusty Cunts, Cunts? He didn't from the make Tigers. It. He didn't make Classic. it. Classic. Didn't make the cut. He might have been number one on my list. See, that's it's all perspective. You know what? I gotta I gotta get all the dicks in order so that I can yeah, do a little we'll end of the show. We'll just do a thing. collage. We'll do a collage. We're gonna do a collage the of the dicks. dicks. So the dick collage. We'll put it all together for you. So you brought some cards here today. Yeah. We're supposed to be. Do discussing we even want to do it? Yeah. We're <laughs> <laughs> Do you, do you even want to discuss it anymore? This is going to be such a letdown. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, Howard uh, Stern, eat your heart out this morning. <laughs> he'll be doing sports, and we'll take over. <laughs> We're yeah, trading he'll shows. Be, he'll be doing sports. We're going to trade shows. Let's see, uh, Howard Stern. Let's talk about prospects on the Howard Stern. Yeah, we'll do some prospects on the Howard Stern show. <laughs> so the, the first card I got here. Um, David Johnson, it's an extra points parallel. It's an auto from uh, 2016. And uh, I actually just acquired this one. There's only 10 of them, so it's a low-produced card. Yeah. It's, uh, I just like the way the card looks. I kinda, it just came in, so I said, oh, I'll bring it with me. And it's funny that you have that because I just I got my, yeah, I, my I, David Johnson <clears throat> rookie card here that's up for sale. David Johnson. Again, I'm here. Yeah. It is his rookie card, and it says platinum. I think it was his tops platinum. Yep. Yep. Tops yep. platinum. Those are nice. So this is this is not numbered, but it's David Johnson's rookie card, tops platinum, a little chrome looking, and here is John Newman's David Johnson prestige rookie card. No, it's not his rookie. Or not, not his rookie card, just an autograph here yep. of David Johnson. And there's so, only ten in the world. This is seven of ten. And this is available for purchase through Newman Sports Cards. Yep, that's you. Not even on the site yet. That's how new this is. The, not even the, on the site yet. He just brought can't. it straight here. Yeah. So if he leaves without it, nobody will know. <laughs> David Johnson. And this is a guy. Autographed card. To, here. Not to give anyone advice, but I'll, I'll do it anyway. Right now, David Johnson's cards, because of him missing most of the year due to injury. Yeah, we're going to put this up here. Right you now. know, um, his stuff is actually. Very affordable for as talented. Yeah, it seems as like whenever is. somebody has an injury, that's the time to go and buy the yeah, cards. It's, it's, like Tyler Lydon, I got three of his cards for like two dollars. Yeah, it's not. A bad, <laughs> the guy didn't even have a it's rookie It's actually either. good. It's a. You know? It's it's a smart thing to do if you believe in a player and you, you believe he's coming back from that injury. Yeah. You know, and David Johnson, as we talked earlier, is is to me one of the two best backs in the NFL. You know, I know there's some. Dallas fans that might want to make an argument for Steal for it Elliot. Yeah. Do it over here. So, so you can buy either one of these, folks. We have this is through me the David Johnson rookie card from Topps Platinum when Topps was still making cards. So not even just for the David Johnson factor or the rookie factor, but the fact that this David Johnson card is one of the last cards that Topps was able to make. And then we have the. David Johnson, seven of ten in the world, autographed card that you could buy through Newman Sports Cards, and the link is right here on the video. ECWID.com backslash sports backslash Newman Sports Cards. So, rookie card of David Johnson, autographed card of David Johnson, and that's the funny thing about it is that is that when a guy gets hurt, he drops off, people forget about him, yeah. and that's when you kind of run and. Buy the cards like like me. I could have got Blake Bortles autograph for two bucks before the season. Yeah. At the end of the season, it's twenty nine ninety nine. It, it, it changes 39. like it changes like the weather in Syracuse. It really, you know, it's really like day trading. You know, it really yeah. is, and and it's it's not a bad strategy to, you know, when a guy gets hurt. Not that you're rooting for an injury per se, but. If a guy does go down an injury and you believe he's he's a and you're a card collector, yeah, that's when to to, to get to, on him, yeah. Yeah, you, you almost know, want to look get up a thing on a low that's ceiling. like injured car, injured player. Yeah, cards or something. now you got to be careful. You know that could go the other way around too, because if it's an injury, injury they never really are the same from, or maybe never even get back on the field. Yeah, then you you know then you're in trouble. Yeah. So. so what else did you bring here? All right, so you know the, we John we talked. I know we talked about you know the Otani hype, the Otani mania. Yeah. You know this guy kind of 
a little bit overshadowed. Bowman, the new Bowman, is has been out a couple weeks now, um, and this guy is really the American Otani. He's uh, yeah. he's pitching and he's hitting. Uh, Louis came from Louisville, uh, first round pick of the Tampa Bay Rays, um, and he's quite a player in his own right. So I actually this one I acquired uh, recently too. This is a uh, Brendan McKay. Okay. This is a Green Shimmer Auto, and it's to ninety nine. And this is an actual card. I don't do this a ton, but this will be a card I probably just put in a box. Um, I, I have a box, what I call my kind of uh, a stash box. It's not stuff I'm necessarily keeping right. for myself. It's stuff I'm actually just not putting up for sale at the moment because I think long term it might have more of a longer term type of investment. Value, yeah. This is this is one of those guys. It's Brendan McKay, aka the American Otani, um, because he's a hitter and he's a pitcher and he does he does both fairly well. This one's numbered to ninety nine. It's the green shimmer. And it's really cool because it looks like waves. Yeah. So Brendan McKay and it and it actually looks like I want to get it as close you can see him right there. You can see the waves right here. They go, yeah. they flow up. They flow upward, or the other way. This yeah, way. and this is, you, you know, like we this. we talked about this last week on card auto versus sticker. The this is one of those on card autos. This is so. an on card auto with the wavy refractor green. Brendan McKay, Tampa Bay. We'll put it on the other side so you can see it's number fifty three of ninety nine in the world. This is called the serial number cards. For those of you that have just started collecting maybe you could see that serial number right here in the corner number 53 of 99 only 99 made in the world and that's the specific number that was made and, and Brendan McKay for those not familiar with him he like uh Shohei Otani he they, they use him as a hitter in first baseman and he pitches so yeah. it'll be it and he's actually having a very good year in the minors as, and i think he's going to be moving is up this through one the that ranks. you pulled or you thought you got when i had to purchase so this one you purchased. yeah and i got a pretty good deal it's probably just going to get put away for the moment um to be determined later but right. he's moving up through the ranks um have you been to tropicana field no i've been to florida i've, I've been there been a bunch there. of times yeah a lot of people don't like it i guess yeah yeah, well, they don't. It was like the new of its kind because it's built up and it kind of looks like it was like sand and it's built rising. But when you yeah. go inside of it, you know, people don't like the look and and whatnot. But when it was first built, it had the NCAA tournament, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Even when they were winning there for those years, they were people didn't show trouble. Up. Yeah, they were the crazy. first team to advance to the postseason. I was in the locker room doing interviews, standing next to Joe Madden. And I and I got they were they were spraying champagne, beer, wine, everything. I had wine, champagne all over me. They had tarp up and they had garbage bags. That was like one of the coolest things in the world. And they could not give tickets away yeah, to get people to go to the game. Doesn't make any sense, that you know. And I, I, I'm not for like relocating teams and and having teams live cities. To the beach, I don't know. But if you can't, if you're winning and you can't fill the stadium, there's... there's if you get trying to give away 12,000 free tickets where you have to go on the yeah. internet and print your ticket off and people didn't do that. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. I, I just don't... Good team, though. It doesn't make sense, but... Tampa Bay Rays. Yeah. What else you got here? All right, so another guy of the same ilk, another uh, top pick of the Reds in this case. Yeah. This is Hunter Green. Uh, this isn't an auto. This is a refractor number to 99. Okay. And he's another guy that was a, a, a pitcher and a hitter. Yep. But what the Reds have decided to do with him is really have him just focus on his pitching. Um, so they've kind of just said, hey, we, you know, you throw the ball 100 miles an hour. Yeah. Let's refine that. Let's let's focus on that. So he right now he's just pitching. He's actually struggling a little bit, a little bit, having a little trouble with his command. But he's, I know he's young. Let's see how young he is. Yeah, he, I mean, we're talking about an 18-year-old kid. If you ever see uh, an interview that this this uh, young man, Hunter Green, does, he's you would think he's older than 18 uh, by how he carries himself and, and how articulate he is. But sometimes we forget with these athletes how young they are, especially in baseball. Yeah. I mean, some of these guys are... are, are are signed and drafted 16, 17 year old uh, years old. He he signed right out of high, right out of high school. Hunter Green, 
uh, prolific hitter and pitcher, but the uh, the Reds have just said we we want you to be a pitcher for us. So yeah. this is one of those Bowman to ninety nine green refractors. So green refractor. It is his first Bowman. Something cool that Bowman does is if it's your first card yeah. with Bowman, they put a first right above the the name Bowman. So there's no there's there's no confusion on what was his official first yeah, card. And he literally Bowman. was in high school last year. So right yeah. now, Hunter Green doesn't have a lot of cards produced yet. Right. So, so this is Topps, Bowman, well, Chrome, Green, number to 99 in the world, number 60, and it's in gold, the coloring here, which is really cool, and it's his first ever Bowman card. There is Hunter Green, pitcher for the Cincinnati Reds. And we'll bring it to the back, let you look at the back here for a second. But like John said, because he this this young man is pitching for the Reds after spending last year in high school. And this in card the Red is system, not not in the Red not system. In, yeah. yeah. He's yep. pitching in the Red system, yeah. He struggled a little bit. I, I looked up some of his numbers, a, a couple videos. Let's see, 60 um, to 99 right there. Yeah, a little bit overthrowing it, I think, because he throws so hard. But, you know, at 18... Right. They're going to work with and him 18, and refine and, and, that. And not having a lot of stuff and out. And if, so. if you read all the scouting reports on him, he's as, you know, I hate to use the, the two words, but can't kind of a can't-miss prospect is what they're calling him. So yeah. we'll see. What's the your, last, the last one, one here? this is something Tops did this year. It's a new concept. Okay. It's called a living set. And what, what they do, to give you a little background on, on Tops' living set, is each week Top releases three cards. These don't come out of packs. You got to get them right from Tops or on the secondary market. Yeah. You know eBay from someone else who got them from Top. So you can't open a pack and get any of these living set cards. They're modeled after the 1953 Tops. Those mm -hmm. those painting colored cards, which are a famous set. Yeah. They did a real great great job. All the photos used are facial close-ups, which are, are kind of different and nice. Yeah. And each week, Tops picks three new guys. They release the cards. And how this works is this. They, they only make a few to start with to show what the cards will look like. Yeah. And then they open it up for anyone who wants to order for one week, seven days. <clears throat> and however, whoever orders, that's as many cards as they make. So... It could be 13,000. If 13,000 cards get ordered, they yeah. make 13,000 cards and that's it. If 2,000 cards get ordered, that's it. And they don't make any more. They're not in packs. And then they ship them out. And each week they make three, three new guys. And they'll, this will be what's called an eternal set. Okay. They will do this forever. Okay. The only way a player can have a second card made is on this rule. The only time a player can get a second card made is if he changes teams. So the first card released in this set was Aaron Judge. He was he was card number one. So there won't be another living set Aaron Judge only if he goes from the Yankees to someone else, whether it be a free agent or a trade. Yeah. So if he if Aaron Judge plays his whole year out career out as a Yankee, there will be one Aaron Judge living set card. Okay. Um, the one I brought in is kind of the, the, the toast of the town at the moment is Ronald Lacuna. And what's cool about this card is it's also being produced in his rookie season. So it has that rookie card designation yeah. on it. Um, so this the, is a very, it's a very different. Has, is, has, have they done anything like this before? No, this is really a first. People, Some people love it. Some people aren't big fans of it. I, I yeah. like it. What I'm doing, I'm not getting every one. But I'm I'm picking spots where like you and know how do you I got do that? some you have to get in touch with Tops. You can go right on Tops' website, um, you know, and and that's what I, how I get them. So you, you go know. on the website, you see what's available. You see each you week want there's there's they release three cards for right. the week. Let's do that right now. Shall we yeah. do that? Yeah. Let's go to Tops' as well. Let's go to Tops' if website. We go Tops.com. It should come up. Okay. Let's see what we got here. We're gonna go to Tops.com. You know what we should do? There it is. The let's make it. Set. Let's make it fun for everybody. Because I have the ability to do this, Put it's it right up yeah, it's it's no fun for you guys to to not get to see this yourself. I mean, that's the whole point of doing live video while we're live on mixlr.com/backslash wakeupcalldt. So let's bring the website up. 
And here we are. I am not a robot. Tops needs to know. Good thing you answered that because I, I am a robot. Nice. What does it say? All the pictures that have cars. Of course it would this do this is, right now. This is crazy. This is ridiculous. Okay, I'm verified. Oh my gosh. Please also check the new images. I don't care. See, this is this is the beauty of all this stuff. Please try again. All the ones that are... All, what is this? Select all images with roads. This is ridiculous. What a waste of time. Oh my goodness. So we wanted to show you the top stuff, but I don't, yeah, know, I don't know what I'm cooperating. doing. Can they just know that I'm not a robot? How about this? I'm not a robot. How do, how do we... How do we make this work? Verify. Oh my lord. They gotta pick them all. That's the problem. So, bus. That's not a bus. That one's a bus. The first, that we one. We got a bus. See, folks, nope. we're learning this together. The one today. in the middle bottom. Here we and, go. In the middle bottom. We're doing this as a group today to just show you all how crazy this is to prove to the internet that we're not. Look, we're not yeah, a robot. We're in. we're in. We're in. We did it. Oh, Tops is making the royal wedding cards. There you go. Can you all see this now? Here we go. The royal wedding. So, oh my lord, Top, so what are they going to have, pieces of her dress or something? Yeah, I don't be shocked. So what are we doing now? So hit that living set. Living set. We're going to click on this, shop now. So this is this week's three, so we, I see a Raphael Devers. Yep. And then if you scroll down, it's Devers, Randy Henderson, Anderson. and Brandon Morrow. So what they do is each week... They put the they release three new living cards. You can see they're up to thirty. Jackie Robinson. Oh. Well, those are the uh, those are the original fifty threes they're based on. So they haven't released Pee the Wee Robinson. Yeah. They haven't released these yet. Yeah, no, and I don't know. They're 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 really sticking with more current or eighties type guys. So there's okay. the judge actually on on the screen there. That was the first one. Also, you can see if you go. Those are the print runs. See how each one has a different print run. That's yep. how many were ordered. So Ichiro got 10,713. You know, that's great for him because, you know, for a guy that doesn't know who Tom Brady is, he's doing a good yeah, job. That's crazy. Albert so, Pujols got 9,000. Yeah, so there's the Akuna that I actually have in my hand, but you can see how many Akunas were ordered. 46,000. Where is Akuna? Right, keeps one more level Keep down, down to the lower right. Oh, Ronald there. Akuna. Yeah, 46,809 46, orders. Yeah. And then you look at some of these other guys. Jose Altuve. There's a Nick Castellanos. Nick Castellanos, only 2,000 were, were ordered and printed. So it's actually not many. And the Nick Castellano card is actually bringing like 80, 90 to 100 bucks, which is kind of crazy. Here's my question for you. So, so you sometimes it's almost better with these to buy order the these less. Anymore. Like the, after the week closes, they print up the orders, yep. and that's it. And that's it forever. That's it. You can't unless, get them unless you sell them as an individual. Yeah, but you can't. So, so that like the Akuna, Akuna is forty six thousand, right? Yeah. Forty six thousand eight hundred nine ordered. Not to interrupt you, I want to make. Yeah. I just want to make this quick point because it's on the screen. Akuna sold forty six thousand eight hundred nine copies. Yeah. Derek Jeter sold ten thousand. He sold Four more than times. thirty thousand less than Akuna. Yeah. That's, Derek freaking that's, Jeter. And that will, this is the perfect example of, of hype in the sports card industry. Oh Look God. at Otani. There's Otani right there. 20,000. 20, yep. Yep. So, you know, um, and there's you know, Reese Hoskins, uh, rookie of the year, and 5,400. 5,400, yeah. Um, and they, they, so they, they open them up for general public sale for a week, whatever it like gets even ordered. Aaron Judge thirteen thousand. Yeah. I think that would be in like forties or fifties. Yeah. Yeah. And then whatever orders they get, they print those amount of cards, and that's it. And the only way a the, a player can have another card made is he has to change teams and be in a different uniform. So that judge number one. There'll never be another living set judge unless he goes to another team. Man. And it tells you how much time is remaining, five yeah. days and two hours. And uh, once that's gone, you can't get Rafael Devers anymore. You can't get unless he, uh, yeah, unless he changes his team. team. Yeah. And so if a guy Sorry. plays, if a guy plays, here's the Acuna. If the guy plays on that team for his whole career, that will be the only living set card that. that so this exists. man, as far as I know from my quick look at everything on tops. 
has by far outsold everybody. Yeah, this one. I knew it's funny when I when I purchased, you know, and I, I purchased them in in a bulk. I love the dugout quiz. Oh, that's one of the facsimile autographs you were talking about. Yeah, on the back that yep. red, it's not real, folks. One thing I do, just so the general public's aware, I I don't buy every one. Okay, but what I do is each week, and I only do this on my Instagram page, Newman Sports Cards, yeah. at Newman Sports Cards on Instagram. Each week I'm going to put up the three got three releases for the week, yeah. and Top sells them for $8. They're seven ninety nine a piece. Yeah. I will sell them on my Instagram page for 6 bucks because I'm going to buy them in, in enough quantity where I can get them at a, a lower level price. Yeah. And so if anyone is interested, you know, I can order them. You save a few bucks off the Tops website. They're coming from Tops. I'm just buying them in quantities. Are you going where... to be selling the Royal Wedding? Cards? No, I, I won't do that. <laughs> there's, a, there's a line I have to draw. There's a line you have to draw. Yeah, that. So... I will say this, though. There's a John Calipari relic card. And I think if you buy it now, just like the banners that he had at UMass... And at Memphis, you should buy it now before they tear them all down. Yeah. So buy buy the relic cards, but you might have to return them when they delete us history like they did in the past. Yeah. But and and something crazy here, De'Aaron Fox's rookie card, three color patch, four color patch technically. Oh no, it's three color. It's gray, white, and purple. His autographed five of fifteen in the world is five thousand dollars. I have his rookie card and it's not yeah. auto, but I was like Here's a, here's a crazy bucks. thing. But who's so going to buy that? So for five thousand dollars, you could buy two BGS or PSA eight Michael Jordan rookies. I'll, I'll take the Michael Jordan. Rookies. I'll take the Michael Jordan over De'Aaron Fox. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. that's 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 the card industry. It's Ronald just Ronald Acuna. Crazy. Forty six thousand in this living set sold more than Derek Jeter and Aaron Judge. But to tell you the truth, that's what happens Combined, is be, because there's more of these. Yeah. The value is probably going to suffer a little bit. Yeah, because there's so, more out there. So, like I said, Nick Castellanos, uh, a very good player, but not a, not a popular player in, in the card industry. Yeah. His living set card is is anywhere from eighty to one hundred twenty bucks now in the secondary market because there's not many of them made. Yeah. Okuna, who most people think is is can't miss and playing very well early. Yeah. Because there's forty six thousand of these, you can still get these right now. Close to that eight dollar release price. We got three. We got three minutes to go on yeah. on the live feed here. So I want to do this really quick, folks. These are all the ones I have up for sale. This is a jousting Panini jousting LeBron James and a Run the Gauntlet Steph Curry. So you see I'm these dropping two your together. stuff. John's throwing my stuff on the ground because it's not his. Thank God for Chrome cards. There we go. This is the Mike Evans rookie chrome card that I'm surprised because I would think a lot of people would want this. I would want this if I didn't have it. Mike Evans rookie card. One of the only one of the only constants in Tampa Bay. Corey Coleman's rookie card, which should go up if the team does well. Rated rookie. You can get that relatively inexpensively through me. This is one that I love, and I debated on whether or not I wanted to part with this one. This is a Christian McCaffrey. Rookie card. Yeah, out of Donruss Optic. I Don love Russ the op optic. So Basically, like Donruss, looking. yeah, Donruss Optic is, is Donruss answered to Chrome. Yeah, it's Chrome. And so they're really, I got to say, they did a great job with them. They're, they're and really sharp. you can see sharp. the difference because you see the rated rookie here, and then you see the rated rookie optic that looks all chromed out. Yeah, those are great. And they're, they're very good sellers. This is a colored optic. Rookie card for Deontay Foreman. It's a refractor. And it's a refractor, it's a... and it's numbered to 99 in the world, and it's the 10th one that was made. Yeah. So we have that for sale through May. You can get in touch with me here on social media and let me know if you want it. This is a refractor rookie autograph of Jamal Adams numbered to 99 in the world. Let me flip it this way to show you. Get that to you right there. 52 of 99. So... A serial numbered autograph refractor rookie of Jamal Adams of the Jets. And then we have Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon's rookie card, just like David Johnson. And one of the final ones ever made by Tops. We only have a minute left, so i got to do this really quick. I finally got one in a little screw case. And John yeah, hasn't nice. seen this yet. It is 
25 in the world, three color patch, Kareem Hunt rookie card. So oh, this yeah. is a rookie patch auto. It's, it's, it's my first RPA. Yeah. You see that of Kareem Hunt. And RPA is just fun to say, RPA. Yeah. So I got yeah. my first RPA. And if and those Kansas City fans can come a call and as always we thank you for being a part of the show. We appreciate it so much at Wake Up Call DT on Facebook, Twitter at Call DT, Instagram at Wake Up Call underscore DT. The links to Newman Sports Cards are here. Check them out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and buy their stuff. John, as always, I appreciate awesome. it, brother. Awesome. Thank you to everybody, Chuck Wilbur, and to everyone that was a part of the show. Have a great day. God bless you. Keep watching our videos, supporting the show, and we'll talk with you on Monday. Have a phenomenal, phenomenal weekend.